Hello and a very good morning to you. I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all keeping safe. Welcome along to Sewing Street. My name is Debbie Shaw and we're going to be live with you for the next three hours. If you're new to Sewing Street, we are the only dedicated needlecraft channel in the UK. So every show that you see will involve fabrics and sewing machines and notions and education and inspiration and ideas to motivate you if you've lost your mojo um, or to get you going if you're a complete beginner sewer as well. You can get in touch if you like, we're on Facebook, so if you go to our Facebook page which is Sewing Street TV, go to the visit posts and you can drop us a line and that could just be hello, it could be a picture of what you've been making, it could be any kind of questions sewing related that you want to ask. So if you've got a UFO and you're not sure what, what to do with it, unfinished object, um, then come on through if you need any advice, if you need anything explaining, if you'd like to see anything particular or you just want to say hi and that will come directly through to me I've got my phone here on the said page in the studio so we can answer you straight away so we can get nice and interactive as well now because you're watching so early in the morning we have a special treat for you so every morning where we can we're going to bring you an early bird special and that means that we have a reduced price item which will stay reduced while we have the stock and this time look at what we have for you two and a half meters of fabric that you're going to find really useful. 100% cotton, it's ivory, and it's a really nice weight of ivory as well. So please don't look at your screens and think, oh, I thought it was gonna be something a bit more interesting than that. At £13.96 for your price, you've got an incredible price for the quality of fabric that you have, and you are going to be using this for, you can make a lovely crisp blouse out of it. It could be linings for bags, it could be linings for jackets. You can be using this as sashing um, if you're quilting or borders or just cut the whole lot into two and a half inch um, 45 degree strips and then you've got your binding from this as well. This is something that you're going to have in your stash and you're going to come to time and time again. Are you going to experiment with some free motion embroidery? Do you need a plain canvas? Then this is going to be an ideal fabric for that as well. Out of all of the fabrics that I have in my stash, which is rather large, um, it's probably the ivories and the whites that I go to most of all, even when you can't see them as in linings. And for linings, I like something that's of quality, but you're probably not going to see it. So I don't want to spend a lot of money on it and that's exactly what you have here so again it's really lovely quality that that's something that you can't see or feel on tv um, but do trust me when i'm explaining it's it's not sheer and see-through you've got a nice tight weave on this normally with more affordable fabric shall we say inexpensive fabrics you get what you pay for so you will see a looser weave and you, you will see a transparency in the fabric but with this you don't it really is a fabulous price now while we have the stock it's only uh, you're saving three pounds 45 so you're basically paying for two meters and we're going to give you half a meter for free. If you order more than one piece, they are pre-cut. So that you will get, if you order two, you will get two, two and a half meter lengths. Um, so you're not good. Well, you could be lining curtains with them. In fact, you could, uh, you could line substantial curtains with these. You just need to order a few so that you can join them together. So your two and a half meters is certainly a nine inch, uh, 90 inch drop if you've got big curtains in your patio maybe. So that would be an idea for you as well. So affordable cotton fabric of quality at a very low price at 13 pounds and 49 pence. So we will keep this for as long as we have the stock. You can buy as many as you like. So we don't restrict these offers to one per customer. If you want to buy 10, you go ahead and buy 10. But I know this is going to be really, really popular. It's the kind of colour as well that's going to be so useful because it will go with anything that you have as well, even with your whites. So £13.96 if you'd like to order. You can order on the website, which is sewingstreet.com, or you can order on the phone lines, which is 0800 001 4433, and that's a UK-based, um, oh gosh, a UK-based phone line. I'm saying no oh gosh because I've just heard that a quarter of the stock has already sold out. You're multi-ordering, aren't you? Good for you. You've got such a bargain for quality fabric. If a quarter of the stock's gone like that, it's not going to be lasting much longer. So if you are planning to order, and please don't think, oh, well, I know that the 720 is coming up later on, and I know you've got some books and we've got some fabrics. What if I want to buy something later on? We're not going to charge you any extra fee postage. So you'll see on your screens, it says 395 PMP all day. 
And that's exactly what it means. So if you order this now, make sure you get it in the bag, make sure you get hold of your early bird. And then if you come back later on today, even while we're not live this afternoon or you order anything else off the website, packet of pins or needles, whatever it may be, we're not going to charge you any extra for anything that you order until midnight tonight, which I think is a great deal. Right, we will be back probably to tell you that's sold out, but let's move on and take a look at springtime. Nothing, I mean, at the moment, isn't it wonderful? We were sat in, um, in the garden for a while yesterday with my daughter, um, just looking at the blossom on the trees. It's amazing. We've got, um, um, oh, I can, oh gosh, what's it called? We've got a huge tree that has long yellow dangly flowers. I've forgotten the name of it. And the buds are just starting to come through. But for me, flowers, springtime, it's uplifting, isn't it? And these are the most beautiful bouquet. Well, this is the most beautiful bouquet. Now, it looks like a watercolour painting, and it's a really gorgeous print, but what are you going to do with it? For me, I think I would hand embroider, and I would add some really delicate little beads, just really subtle, just in the centre of the flower. Or maybe you could um, free motion embroider around the edges. Oh, in something like silver, so it looks like dew. That would look amazing. Oh, just want to mention really quickly the early bird. Apparently, the image on the website's wrong. Sorry, um, but you will get um, an ivory-coloured two and a half metre length of fabric. Not sure what what you're looking at on the website, but oh, a book of it. <laughs> if you go on the website and you see a book of embroidery, you're not going to get the book of embroidery. You will get your two and a half metres of cream fabric. We, we like to keep you on your toes. So what would you do with yours? If you're ordering your peonies right now, what have you got in mind? What about going for a couple of them and making cushion covers? You could make a huge cushion cover. I mean, that measures 65 centimetres. I'm not sure what that is in inches. Let me give you a... Is that looking inches? Don't always understand centimetres. You've got about 26 inches. They can make a huge cushion cover with it almost like a, a floor cushion kind of size. Or just a really pretty panel if you put a, um, a border around, maybe a pen, ooh. Maybe a bit darker. Oh yes, look at that. So if you were to put a border around the edge in that kind of color, really makes the colors pop, doesn't it? Or you could add another one in pink. You can go as big as you like if you're making a wall hanging or a small quilt. But I just think this colour. These are coming up in the, uh, in the next hour. They are um, canvases, so they might be a bit heavy. I just wanted to show what it looks like with a colour around it. Doesn't that really bring it out? Or even a green, that would look really nice as well. So if you are a beginner sewer, and there's lots of you out there, I know, then you've got a, an, a really easy project here because all you're going to do is to, where did they come from, just there. Get yourself some wadding. Doesn't have to be um, a wool wadding or anything expensive if you're going to just make a wool hanging out of it. Um, so just a polyester is going to be fine. And then some lining fabric, oh, or backing fabric. And then maybe a coloured bias binding around the edge. No, you don't even have to do that, don't have to do that. You put this on top of your wadding. You put your lining on top, cut it out so that it's square around the outline. Sew all the way around, but leave a gap in the bottom. Turn it the right side out and then top stitch, maybe in a pink or a purple color, just around the edge. That's going to be the easiest project that you can make. If you're a more experienced sewer, then you can add your borders and your sashing and your, um, your own bias binding if you wish and just make that as large as you like. Or of course you can look at homewares, you could go for a few of these and join them together and make a really lovely large um, table runner. But at £7.99, if, if, you, if all you're going to do is to put it around a piece of canvas and hang it on the wall, what an affordable picture you have. You'd pay an awful lot more, wouldn't you, for a print on canvas or a print on paper than you are doing for a print on fabric like this. 100% cotton and all designed and printed in the UK as well. And that's just £7.99. Right, let's move on. We've got more to show you. We've got a couple of pink cushions. Pink cushions are really important in, in, your, in your toolbox. 
Because where are you going to put your pins if you haven't got a pincushion? Um, and pincushions can be so much fun as well. But important things, and this, this might sound a bit silly, important things um, about pincushions is stability for me, because I don't always look at the pincushion when I'm putting pins in it. So if I'm sewing on my sewing machine, I want to be able to stab my pincushion without it rocking and falling over and, and rolling off the, off the table. So this has got a nice wide base on it. If I've only Excuse me, if I've only got one pincushion, I like a pincushion with areas. So I've got somewhere to put pins, I've got somewhere to put needles, I've put somewhere to put safety pins, because I like to keep them all separate. And I know I, I, am, I am very organised. I'm very organised in my sewing room, I'm very organised in my life, um, and I'm very organised in my pincushions. So I, I do even kind of arrange them in colours as well. I like to use glass head and flower head pins most of the time, which tend to have different coloured heads. So I, I kind of group them all together. So I'm not rummaging around trying to find something. I do it with my needles as well. So I, no, it's not for everybody, but uh, I, I do like to be able to identify exactly where the pin that I want is. Because pins and needles, safety pins, something that you use a lot when you're sewing, aren't they? So it's not just a pretty pincushion, it's a very well-designed pincushion. But it is a very pretty pincushion as well. Uh, it comes in a box too. So if you're giving this as a gift, easy to wrap, lightweight to post. Um, and it's only £12.99. I think it looks a lot more. And you can never have more than one um, enough pin cushions. Um, I, I don't just have different pin cushions for different pins. I'll have them in different areas as well. So I've always got a pin cushion next to my cutting area. I've always got a pin cushion next to my sewing machine. And then there's another pin cushion that's in my sewing box, which is on the floor down this side. Loads of pin cushions, never have too many. So that's the sewing machine. Or you could go for a little carriage. He needs a, he needs a name, doesn't he? A little doggy pink cushion. What we're calling him, sorry? Sid. <laughs> this is Kat who's directing the show today, who's in, in my ear, not literally. Um, and, and she said Sid would be a good name. I think he looks a bit like a Sid, doesn't he? Yeah. Only £14.99. And, and again, it's, it's nice and stable, but it's just a, a cute little character, which again would make a nice gift idea if you just want to send a little something to somebody who's sewing whether they're a beginner sewer or an advanced sewer. He'll put a smile on your face, won't he, when, when you open the box. Early bird, we've only got 20 left. I know this is going to be a popular one. What a bargain! You have two and a half metres of ivory cotton fabric, which isn't the quality that you expect for your £13.96. It's better than you expect for £13.96. It's going to be linings for bags, for curtains. It's going to be the back of cushion covers. It is the kind of quality that you could dress make with it if you wanted to make a lightweight blouse. And it is light enough to gather if you wanted to do that as well. It's just something that's really useful to have in your stash. Multi-order those while we've got the stock, but we've only got, you can order 20 if you like. That may be a bit greedy, but you can if you want to. So you can order as many of those as you want to, but that is going to sell out pretty soon. £13.96 is your price there. Now we're still having a, a we're kind of having a floral theme in the show this morning. Um, so we're kind of in the garden, so we've got flowers, we've got the birds, we've got the peonies, we've got the dog. This is the Henry Glass Hydrangea Fabric Range. I love this. I, I actually chose this from the, um, from the warehouse because I was immediately drawn to the colours. The lilacs and the lavenders, and I love birds and I love hydrangeas. So the whole combination together. But the colours were the first thing that I saw. And when, when you go into these places, there's huge shelves and shelves and shelves and all, all you see is just fabric and it can be quite bewildering. It's like going into the biggest fabric store you've ever been in, but then ten times bigger. And where do you start? And I immediately was drawn to this one because out of all of those fabrics, there was nothing like the colours that you see in here. So we bought the lot um, and we've got the lot for you in a bundle here as well. So let's have a look at the birds first of all. Um, I shan't open them all up because there's a lot to get through. Little birds on twigs. Only available in the bundle. Some of them are available on their own. I shall show you that shortly. Um, but these are only available in the bundle altogether. Aren't they pretty little bluebirds and, oh, I don't know, don't know what they are, chaffinch, sparrows. But very delicate as well. You could fussy cut those and use them for English paper piecing if you wished. We've got a nice, almost solid colour with um, an outline of hydrangea bracts. 
because they're not flowers, um, in the background. The, the flowers are the little bits in the centre here and the colours of them. So, so all of the, what you think of the petals here aren't actually petals, they're coloured leaves. And the flower is a tiny bit in the middle. It's one of Mother Nature's very clever ways of making something that would normally be green more attractive to insects and birds. So she colours them. So they're actually called bracts. There you go, a bit of a gardening lesson as well while we're here. I love a bit of nonsense. So there's three. Then we've got... Um, I will open this one and this is available on its own if you have a look on the website um, because there's so much you can do with this not just as a piece of fabric um, but because you have the um, the squares so you can cut those out and use them as a plique individually or you could just sew around the outline so it looks like you piece them together so make it look like a piece of patchwork there's half a meter in each one of these by the way so you do get quite a lot of fabric there and then let's take a look in the garden. So this is a little bit more busy than the previous one, but you've still got the bird houses. They're almost like chevrons from a distance, aren't they? But again, really nicely detailed on there. Love birds. Any cut I like my, my favourite bird is actually crow. I just think they've got such attitude. You know, when you're driving down the motorway and they, they don't even step out of the way till the last minute. Um, but I love their, their songs and their looks and their cheekiness. We've got, um, we've got a robin um, in our garden at the moment and those are the cheekiest of birds, aren't they? they they'll give you a good old telling off if you get too close. <laughs> OK, so we have birdhouses. Again, with the hydrangeas. So a little bit more white in the background with this one. But look at the detailing. You've got like a, almost a filigree design. It looks like a stamp, doesn't it, in between the birdhouses. So again, that's something that you could fussy cut if you wanted to. Then we have the tossed hydrangea. Called so because this is non-directional. Um, so the designer would have literally tossed the design so that the flowers appear in multi-directions. So you can use this any which way you like, which I know is uh, important for a lot of quilters and people who really like to get the value for money from the fabric. So there's that one. We have brought you this fabric before and I know it's sold out and we brought more back again. So if you have, oh lovely, so looking at your messages. Um, if you've already made something with any of the range, I'd love to see what you've made. Because I, I, I was thinking bags, there's um, a sewing machine um, mat. The panel's coming up in a minute, I'll show you that in just a sec. But maybe it's, it's homewares, maybe something like this one with the borders. You're thinking um, table runners, cushion covers. If you wanted larger pieces, by the way, these are available on their own on the website. So have a look at zonestreet.com. And if you order on their own, then you can order larger pieces because they will, they'll be cut by the half metre. So if you order two of this one, you'll get, um, you'll get a one metre piece. But that would make nice borders when you need to order a few. But borders around a quilt would look fabulous. Go. So there you've got the individual little flowers. Lots of detail in there again. All in the bundle, so everything I'm showing you here now, you get the lot. But these are available individually as well, if you so wished. So. And then finally, you've got the Tusk Tide Ranger on blue. Oh, it's not finally, you've got the big panel as well. Just to show you the amount that you're getting, because I'm not opening these all the way out. That's it, it's 112 centimetres wide, and you've got half a metre of each one of them. So there's an awful lot. I would imagine if you're going for the bundle, you're thinking about making a quilt. But again, if you made one already, come and show pictures. There we go. 
Oh, apparently there is a quilt from this collection on the Sewing Street fans page. I'll have to take a look later. Now this is the panel, so this is included in the bundle as well. Only available in the bundle, this isn't on its own. So that's it. You don't have to use the complete panel as it is. If you wanted to cut those pieces up individually, then of course you can do that. It's your fabric, you do what you like with it. But as a wall hanging on its own, I think that's just so pretty. You know, it really is a head turner, isn't it? It's an attention seeker when it's on your wall, no matter what room it's in. It fills up a big gap. Or you could use it as the centre of a quilt. Now, the, um, the wall hanging that I made, or the small quilt actually that I made behind, is um, it has a border on it. So this is the panel. And all I did with it, I put actually two layers of wadding behind there to make it nice and thick. I just used a wool wadding. And then I've stitched around the edge of each one of those pieces to give it depth, to quilt it so it holds the layers together. But it also makes it look pieced, as if I've actually put those pieces together myself. But then I've used the Toss Tide Ranger on blue to make a border. Make that even bigger by adding more fabric if you wanted to. So you could easily make this into a single bed quilt if you just keep adding more and more borders or putting a wider one on to start with. So that could be the centerpiece of a whole, oh, a whole home decor experience for you. Really bright, beautiful, colourful, quality Henry Glass fabrics. Family company, American company. But you've got a gorgeous design. Um, if the whole bundle is just a little bit too overwhelming or too much for the project that you have in mind, let me take you through all of the fabrics that are available individually. So I've mixed them all up now, so I don't know where I'm starting. Let's go for the squares. If you have just a, I don't have a matching fabric here, uh, maybe a plain blue or a plain purple, greens, uh, mustard tones, creams, early bird. You can mix and match and really make the fabric go an awful lot further. So on its own, just sew around those squares, give it that quilted kind of look. Make fabulous cushion covers. What about little girls' dresses? Are you sewing for the garden, maybe? Um, so as a cushion to kneel on, or is it going to be um, cushion covers for your garden furniture? Maybe making um, seat cushions. Could do. Two seat cushions out of this really easily if you put a plain fabric on the back. This is where I was saying about the early bird earlier on, making your more expensive stretch even further by using the bits that you can't see in more affordable fabric. So that's the small blocks in blue. And it's £6.99 for half a metre. If you order more than one, they'll come all joined up. So if you wanted to make a pair of curtains, then you can order you know, metres of this if you wanted to. This is the, I was just calling this one birdhouse. There's so many of these. Blue birdhouses, this one. Effective, isn't it? Have we got any? Oh, no, now then, if you had yellow as your border, that would really make the yellows in this pop, wouldn't it? How's that? That really makes it stand out. It's nice to have a fabric where there are so many colours to choose from. And when you put something like a yellow next to this, you'll see that the yellow in the birds is really drawn out. It really changes the look of your fabric. That would be the same if you put a green next to it or even a turquoise would look at me. I'll show you that because I do have a turquoise fabric over here. So that's with the yellow. So that is with the turquoise and it gives it a completely different look, doesn't it? A little bit more softer, but it really draws out the blue of the birdhouses. So let me do that again just to show you. Yellow birds really stand out. <laughs> Blue bird houses really stand out. <laughs> so you're really drawn into whatever colour it is you use on your border. And again, by adding your extra fabric, you make the most of the fabric that you're buying with the print on it. 
in there. Things don't always work. This is why it's nice to have a stash, because you can just dive in there and, and find something that works. So we've got more birdhouses here. Nice quality as well. Um, important, it's important to have a really lovely quality fabric. You're spending a lot of time sewing, you spend a lot of time, a lot of money on your sewing machine, and it's just nice to have a quality fabric to work with. But it means that, you know, fabric goes through your hands so much when you're sewing with it by hand or machine. So it's nice to have something that feels nice when you're working with it as well. And of course, the better quality of the fabric, the longer it's going to last as well. And particularly if you're giving something away, if you're gifting or if you're selling what you're making, um, it's nice to have that name on there, if you will. So, you know, your, your Henry Glass, oh, this is Henry Glass fabric. So it, um, it, it shows the quality. Lovely colours. We have um, sparrows in the garden. We've got lots of pigeons. I do like the pigeons. They're a bit daft, but I do like pigeons. Um, but we have kites flying over. I've seen one in the garden before now. And they're just so graceful. I could sit and watch them for hours. Toss tide rangers. We have a bird feeder in the garden. We don't have a bird house. And we see blue tits and chaffinches on there sometimes as well. Um, Jenny Wrens occasionally. What do you have in your garden? If you're lucky enough to have a garden, as you look out of the window, what do you see at the moment? Hopefully blue skies and sunshine. I'm hearing it might not be lasting. But are you in bloom? Have you got buds and flowers springing out in the garden? Have you got hydrangeas? OK, we've got border fabrics. So this is, this is actually printed, the selvage to selvage is that way. So if you wanted a long border, you'd need to order quite a few metres to get the width. There you go. I think that would make a nice wall hanging as it is, you know. I'd still stitch along the, um, along the lines, maybe add a little bit of embroidery to it. But there's so much detail in these. There we go. <laughs> Hannah Producer has squirrels and a robin in her garden at the moment. We get blackbirds. I don't get squirrels very often. I do three cats and a dog. They're probably scared off a little bit. Still more to show you here. So this one is Morning Glory. They look a little bit like um, bindweed flowers, don't they? The bane of your garden until they start to flower, and it's the one occasion where you really want weeds. Again, these are at £6.99, 100% cotton. That's your price for half a metre. If you, if you can't keep up, or you're getting a bit bored and you're flicking through all of these fabrics, have a look online. Go to the website, onto uh, sewingstreet.com. We've had a message from Christine. Hi, Christine. She says, morning, Debbie, morning. Loving the birdsong fabric, lovely. Oh, I'm glad you like this. Um, we normally have blue tits nesting, but we've got bees again this year. Now, that's wonderful as well, isn't it? Oh, there we go. So that's the tossed hydrangea on blue. Aren't the colours gorgeous, though? They're so rich. And again, it's £6.99. pence. So those are all of the ones that are available individually, if you so wish. But remember, if you go for the whole bundle, you get the lot and extra and the panel as well. Really, do we still have more to show you? But let me give you a reminder while we have the stock of the peony panel. <clears throat> I'm thinking cushion covers. I'm thinking, um, I love, I mean, how many would you need for a quilt? Maybe six with some uh, sashing and borders in between. Make a decent sized quilt then, wouldn't you? Now this is only seven pounds and ninety-nine pence. It's a gorgeous print. Really cheery and uplifting. What a way to, to give somebody a bouquet of flowers that's uh, that's never going to die. So is this going to be a wedding anniversary present, maybe you could make something, or a birthday gift? Or even quite simply just wrapping it around a canvas and having that as a gorgeous painting in your home 
I wonder if peonies are... Because a, a, every month has its own flower, doesn't it? I think I'm a rose in July, I can't remember. I can't remember. So maybe, I, I don't know. Should have looked it up first, shouldn't I? <laughs> Happening as we speak. So the whole panel, which is about 26 inches or 65 centimetres square, is only £7.99. What are you going to do with yours? It's so pretty though, isn't it? Oh, pin is mean romance, prosperity, good fortune, a happy marriage, riches, honour and compassion. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't say no to any of the above, to be honest. Actually, you never, you never see flowers that, that represent despair or unhappiness, do you? Oh, no, I wouldn't go for that one. Or that, <laughs> that, that one stands for poverty. No, I wouldn't go for that one. OK. We have Liberty Fabrics again, all florals. I'll just say good morning, Carol. Carol made her first bag yesterday with frozen fabric. Uh, it's the mini satchel from my satchels book. That's coming up in the next hour. Um, Three-year-old granddaughters wanted a bag made from frozen fabric, so Granny had to oblige. The template was so easy to use. Thank you. Thank you. If you've got any comments and questions, remember, come on through to our Facebook page, which is Sewing Street TV. Go to Visitor Posts, and you'll find me there. Right, let's take a look at Liberties. I'm going to decrease that. Don't get ages twine, not this morning. Um, so, these have such a lovely, dainty little print. I do like small prints, and I like small prints for small people. So if you're making dresses for little girls, this is going to be ideal for you. Um, but it, they've got a really foul, a foul, they have a foul outline. Um, but if you're English paper piecing, which I, I'm, I'm kind of getting back into again, it's one of those things, I, once I start, I can't actually stop. And then I'll go for months without doing any, then I'll, I'll have an idea or I'll see a piece of fabric and just say, yep, there we go again. Um, but this is perfect because there's, there's enough of a difference. You, know, you can kind of fussy cut around or have, the, have you know, your, your statement flowers in the centre of whatever shape it is. But even if you do little half-inch hexagons, you've got, you've got a tiny print which is going to be suitable. And the colours, again, if you've got yellows, if you've got ivories, if you've got your um, early bird special, if you've got fuchsias, then uh, I'm going to have a play. That one works. I'll tell you what will work really well is a coral. That looks nice. Our coral looks a bit pink on our screen, but it is, it is a proper coral. Um, or you could go blues. Oh, that's nice. But again, see how it changes. Really pretty. So the quality here, you are looking at bag making, you're looking at homewares. Um, we are looking at linings, you're looking at dressmaking. If I just open it up again, just to show you the size, these are all the same size, so you get your half metre by 112. But wouldn't that make a really pretty little girl's dress all gathered up around the waist? Or a oh, skirt, look at that. A really simple skirt with an elasticated waist so it doesn't have to be fitted. Nice big pockets in there, pockets made out of your early bird special, of course, because you don't see them. Or it could be a very flashy lining. Hmm. But maybe collars on shirts, if you've got a plain white shirt and you just want to make something a little bit different, you don't want to use all of your fabric or order metres and metres of it to make a shirt with, then you could quite easily just liven up something that's plain white by adding a little splash of colour. So let's move on. This one's got slightly larger flowers, but it's still very busy. Very busy, very blues, very corals. I like to have a play with different fabrics because I don't think you're just going to use this fabric on its own. There'll be a trim or a bias binding or something from another colour. But I'd just like to show you how your fabric changes when you add different colours to it. Pale pink would make this a very summery look. Look how that just draws out the pink again. That's £7.49, so that's the Arley Gardens. These are all named after stately homes, aren't they? Um, right. 
Oh, early bird, by the way, which goes so well with any of these, we are now down to single figures. Oh, you see, even that makes a difference, doesn't it? See? So now the background's being brought out and it gives it a much more pastel, much more summery kind of look. But early bird, that's your two and a half metres of ivory fabric that's about to go now. It's only £13.96, so you're paying for two metres, but we're going to send you an extra half a metre without charging you for it. What do we like? OK, more here. These are just like an outline of the flowers in blues with like a pale turquoise background. So this is Emily Silhouette. Really pretty, aren't they? And of course with Liberty you know that you're getting the quality of fabric as well. That's something I think if you are making to sell, um, do put that in the title when you advertise that these are made from Liberty fabrics because they're so recognisable as high quality. So that's your Emily. Then this one is Chatsworth. So the same kind of tone of blue in the background, like a Wedgwood blue, but this one has um, a peachy colour for the flowers, all tiny prints these, which I think are, they're so useful, so pretty. Again, at £7.49, that's for half a metre. And then finally, we've got, we've got the whole bouquet here. So this one is Mulvan Meadow. And again, it's another non-directional print. Peaches, corals, lemons, greens. Lots of different shades of the leaves in there as well. But it looks like a, it does look like a meadow, doesn't it? Just lots of flowers, lots and lots of colours. And all bright and cheery and happy. All for seven pounds, again, and 49 pence. So that's just about all of the liberties that we have left at the moment. Uh, let's move on. see some very rich colours. So gardening themed, but I think the colours from these are kind of unexpected because they're rich, they're deep teals and greens. The whole bundle together is £24.96. So these are seed packets. So there's still some really pretty colours in there and again they're um, very small prints and very unusual as well. I've not really seen anything like this before. We are giving you a, a plane as well. So that goes with, with all of them. But of course, if you've got more in your stash. But we've already kind of taken the hard work out of that for you. The background is a very deep teal. So they might look quite black on your screen, but it's, it's very, very dark teal. And look how the flowers really stand out. They're, they're gorgeous neon colours. And then this one is more of a, an outline. With watering cans and plant pots. So all four pieces together for £24.96. So it's £6.25 a metre. Um, a half metre. Um, you can order these individually if you wanted to. So she will start where, we've, where we ended here. That again is your half a metre, so that's how much you're going to get. These would be nice fabrics to, to sew for the garden, wouldn't they? If that's your plan. Garden furniture doesn't tend to be very comfortable, is it? I'm always taking extra cushions out with mine. I always have to have one in the middle of my back these days. Um, so you can see you're saving um, about 75 pence if you went for these in the bundle, but if you do want them individually, and therefore that allows you to buy more yardage, then um, they're £6.99 for half a metre. So that's the floral watering cans. That one. And then we have the, the daisies. Love the colours that have been chosen for this. 
So coloured flowers, there is a, a, there is a lot of detail here though. Look at the little spots that you see in the background and in the centre of each one of those flowers. Are they sunflowers or are they daisies? I think they're daisies. So very detailed. So this is your seed packets. So a little bit pale, but you've still got the dark teal in the background. Tiny little seeds look. Cosmos seeds, wildflowers, sunflowers. And the yellow there, I think, really makes it pop. That again is £6.99 for half a metre. But the bundle comes with the yellow. So you'll have seeds, you'll have the coloured flowers, you'll have the outline, and then we don't want to see the selvage, do we? To be neat. And then the yellow, which makes the whole thing pop. All for £24.96. So that is two metres of fabric in total. Again, it's all 100% cotton, so it's really nice quality for your 24.96. We're going back to peonies again. Now, that's everything we've got in the show for you here. Uh, if there's nothing that floats your boat, you can take a look online. Take a look at what's coming up in the next hour. Then we've got a bit of bag making in the next hour. Oh, we've got buttons for you as well. Um, and we can, you can have a look at what's coming up in the 10 o'clock show as well. So have a look on the website, which is sewingstreet.com. When you go to the website, it will take you to um, our sister channel, which is Jewelry Maker. But when you go to sewingstreet.com, we will be there on the home page. So you can watch us there live. And if you have, under, uh, have a look underneath the video box, that will give you a list of everything that we have in the shows this morning. We're live again for three hours this morning. Um, and you can also take a look if you keep scrolling down and go through all the different pages, uh, all of the products that we have for you. We like to bring you such a wide variety of quality fabrics, of high-end sewing machines. Um, we've got very affordable prices and we've got some really high-end products on there as well. We pride ourselves on quality, so you're going to find the best makes of scissors, the best makes of rulers, the best of the brands of sewing machines, the highest quality of name brand fabrics. Um, and of course, you've got all of your notions and everything that you need on there as well. So if you're beginning to sew and you need a toolbox filling up with goodies, we've got tools coming up in the, in the final hour. At 10 o'clock this morning um, we, we've got everything that you need to get going but if you're a more experienced sewer we've got so many products on there for you as well there's plenty of books we've got lots of inspiration so if you can if you've got time to spare have a look on sewingstreet.com and at the moment you'll find our peony panels there as well love to know what you're going to make with it let me just flatten it out so you can see it there you go my first thought was cushion covers I wouldn't leave it as it is. I would, um, I'd hand embroider. I'd add a few tiny little beads to the petals, maybe just clear ones or pearl, pearlized ones so it looks like dew drops or water. I'd maybe do some free motion embroidery around the edge of the petals and I think something like silver would look lovely just to give it a little bit of um, a dewy kind of look. Or you could almost colour in with, um, with different shades of pink. So some lovely pink, shiny, satiny embroidery thread I think would look amazing on this. You could quilt over the whole thing. You know, if you, if you are making a, a wall hanging or a small quilt, a lap quilt, then you could just cross hatch over there or do some stippling, whatever you feel like. Or you can just leave it as it is, cut it out, put a, an edge around it and hang it on the wall. You've got a beautiful painting there for you, just £7.99. Oh, Jill's messaging. Hi, Jill. Uh, she says, J oh, July's flowers are delphiniums and water lilies. I didn't know that. Um, she looked it up. Thank you very much. No, I didn't. I didn't know that. But I do now. <laughs> so there's your peonies. The whole panel, 100% cotton. Again, it's been designed and printed in the UK, which I think is nice for just £7.99. I'd, I'd go for a couple of them, personally. OK, that mega hydrangea bundle, we have two left. So just really quickly, you're going to get the panel. This is the only way you can get hold of the panel, and that's the one that I made at the back. 
With extra, I use the, um, the tossed hydrangeas on blue to make a border. You can make that as big as you like. But I think this makes a really nice centerpiece for a larger quilt. Just keep adding and adding to it till you have the size that you like. That's a really easy make for you. You could cut out those squares individually and use those for individual projects if you wanted to. You've got borders there as well. You've got the birdhouses across the bottom. And you've got a really nice quality fabric. This is all Henry glass again, remember. So you can quilt it, you can embroider it. There's so many things you can do with that. So there's the panel, only available in the bundle. And then these fabrics are only available in the bundle. So you've got the little birds, and I made a, I made a makeup bag out of that. Um, and I used a very contrasting fabric on the inside just to show you that how that goes. And that was the one with the cats on. So not from this range, but you know, you mix and match with what you have. That was a Riley Blake fabric. So that's the birds on the twigs. And we also have that one. And that one. These are only available in, in the bundle, by the way. So the, um, the panel and these three are only available in this way. The others are available on the website on their own if you wanted to have a look through there but just two of the bundle left. Oh, it's going to be like a race now. First two people to get to the phones or check out on the website, this is yours. We have, let me show you here, the birdhouses on squares, the blue birdhouses. I'll open those up a little bit more to show you. That's better. We have blue birdhouses. In all of these, we have more birdhouses, and then we have the hydrangeas. You have your border print, and the smaller flowers. Hydrangeas on blue. This is one that I used as a border around the um, the panel at the back of the set. And this is the the plainer one. So this, if you quilting, this can kind of break up the very the fussy panels that you have. So you put those in between. Goes nice with that one actually. Whoops, come here. That's a pretty combination, isn't it? And then. And this one. And your birds. I do like this bird fabric. So I see something a bit different, isn't it? And your panel. For £76.49. But only a couple of those remaining now. There we go. They do like watercolours, they don't. They, they, every one of these is kind of a, a picture in its own right. But even on the background, you know, if you wanted to, you could cut these out and put them on a plain, um, or oh, maybe a pale green or a turquoise would look nice. So in effect, you're doing that. And then save these strips for another project. and save this strip for another project and put something like that across the bottom. So lots you can do with it. But you have seen these before, a couple of times, because it's sold out first time around. So it'd be nice to see what you've been making with yours. Is it bags? Is it mats? Is it things for your sewing room? Is it things for your garden? Have you been gifting? Are you getting all of your birthday presents sorted out for the rest of the year? Ideal time, isn't it? <laughs> nice time to start a new hobby. Lots of you doing that as well. Um, there's, uh, you know, there is so much interest at the moment. I've, um, I did a couple of radio interviews last week and all people want to talk about in these news programmes is new crafts, how craft can help you, how craft is therapeutic and relaxing. And I, I, I was saying um, to one of the reporters, it's, 
it's not mindful, it's mindless. It really takes your mind away from things. It gives you something to concentrate on. And that's any kind of crafts, I think. But there are so many people looking for crafts at the moment, looking for something to do, looking for new skills to learn. I was listening to the radio on the way in this morning and they were saying that um, although kind of supermarket sales are really dipping at the moment because everyone went mad a few weeks ago, we've got everything. Sales of fitness equipment is increasing. Because, you know, people want to look after themselves while they're at home. OK, that's that. So all of these, again, you've got five metres of fabric in total. That's the border one. Oh. So are you, um, maybe you're a dressmaker and you fancy a bit of quilting. Maybe you're the sewer already, so this isn't a new skill for you to learn, but maybe it's a new avenue that you wanted to travel down, or a new sewing street that you wanted to travel down. I tend to find, don't you, with a lot of, like, quilters quilt, they don't dress make. A lot of people do, they overlap. I like to think I can do a bit of everything. A lot of you will start sewing, making bags, because um, they're simple, they're easy, they're quick. But then you think, actually, now I want to quilt that bag. Or I want to make an outfit to go with that bag. So I think sewing is the most wonderful craft that you can take in so many different directions. Whether it's hand sewing, machine sewing, embroidery. Lots of folding going on, isn't there? There we go. So that is the complete bundle. So as a sewing street, we like to bring you a whole range of different genres of sewing. So it could be quilting. We're going to be bag making in the next hour. Um, it could be dressmaking. Could be homewares, curtain making, cushion covers. Maybe your um, hand sewing, embroidery. And if you do have any suggestions, come and let us know. It doesn't have to be in the show right now, but if you want to put anything on Facebook or the Facebook fans page, um, we're always, we always read them and we're always open to suggestions as well. So if there's anything specific that you'd like to see, just come and let us know and we shall endeavour to do our very best. Oh, now I did mention we've got buttons, didn't I? Oh, oh, hi, Christine. Uh, hi again, Debbie. Back making scrubs bags. Oh, lovely. Do you know, there's so many different things that people are making at the moment as well, aren't there? Uh, mm, 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 mm. What are you making? Right, buttons. We've got buttons for you. Um, these are floral themed again. And this is a little packet of four buttons. So you've got a daffodil, you've got the daisies, you've got a watering can, and you've got your seed packet there as well. Not fabulous. And they're only £2.99. I wouldn't use them as buttons per se, as in buttons on the front of a blouse. Um, but they do make nice little decorations. Or very good at kind of disguising wobbly stitches. <laughs> just stick a button over the top of your points when they don't quite meet. But no, those are just a little bit of fun. And again, at £2.99. £2.99, you wouldn't buy those on their own, would you? Because your postage is three ninety five, and that, that would just be silly. So only value if you're going to buy ten of them, or you can add them onto another order. So you can um, you can benefit from that one postage all day long. The more that you order, the more that you're going to save. Um, okay, now oh, we're going to go, come back in a few minutes. Um, we're going to be talking bag making, and we've got a whole range, a whole kaleidoscope of colours of the most amazing canvas fabric, which I've so fallen in love with. So um, go and put the kettle on, make yourself a cup of tea, and come back in around about three or four minutes' time. See you in a bit. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps 
that's answered there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved, and it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it and when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday.
Hello and welcome back again. You're watching Sewing Street and my name is Debbie Shaw and in this hour we're going to be doing a little bit of bag making. In fact we're going to be making a satchel very similar to this one with canvas fabrics that I absolutely love. All of the colours and uh, oh, they just go so well together. Perfect for bag making, perfect for homewares as well. Um, they're lightweight, they're soft, but they just they just look so stylish. I love these fabrics. So we've got together some bundles for you. Um, there's lots of them and to be honest I wouldn't know which ones to go for because I like all of them so much. So let's take a look at the first ones. Um, here we've got a light grey, a dark grey and there is a, um, a natural which has got seeds in it as well. So it looks a little bit like seeded cotton but it's actually seeded canvas. Uh, in each one of these there is half a metre. So again let me just show you how big your half a metre is. You get all of that, plenty of. Actually, the bag that I made here, I could have made three bags with different colour configurations. So there's an awful lot of fabric with one and a half metres. You don't have to make a bag with it, but I do think they are perfect. And I think it just looks so expensive. I can't believe the price that you're getting all of this for, seriously. This isn't the kind of thing that I'd use for dressmaking unless it was a skirt um, or something heavier like that, or a lightweight jacket. Or maybe if you're going to go for any of Laura's patterns from So Different, like the block dress dresses which you see on the website, would be nice for that as well. Um, so although we say canvas, you know, sometimes um, canvas you imagine to be like um, really heavy, like kind of things that you paint on. It isn't a canvas like that. It's a heavy weight of cotton with a ribbing to it as well. So it's not going to be see-through. It's a substantial fabric, but it just feels such good quality. I, I work with this kind of fabric so much. I absolutely adore it. I just love the colours that have been put together here. Look at that dark grey. Isn't that gorgeous? So the three of those together just look so stylish. Now, if you're making a gift for anybody, this isn't something that's going to interfere or argue with other colours. Um, so it's is something that you can you can give to anybody. I've actually used the paler colour as a lining, which you may think is a bit of a waste. If you've got your early bird, then I'd use that instead and just make this bundle go even further. But you've got a, a good solid fabric, something that's easy to sew through, that looks really good. It irons really well as well. Um, so when you get it home, it will be creased because it'll be in a packet. Um, but the, the creases drop out so easily when you iron it. But look at the texture on that as well. Oh, I wish we had touchy feely telly. So you, can, you could really touch this and feel the quality of that fabric. So it's not a lightweight cotton, this is a canvas fabric. So it's almost like a, a linen kind of weight to it, that, that substantial fabric. But certainly for bag making, and I do quite a bit of bags, then that is absolutely perfect for you. So that's the grey bundle. Look at these. Oh, here we've got a white, which is slightly off-white, and a navy and a mustard. Don't, they go so well together. I love this colour. Really classy, very much on trend at the moment as well. For just £11.49. So I'd maybe do... Mm, I'd do the lining in the white and then maybe the solid colour, uh, the darker colour would be the main part of the bag and then have that as a flap and then or maybe put a pocket in the white on the front as well. Very stylish these are. And again, £11.49 for one and a half metres is such a good price for this kind of fabric. That's such a good price for cotton, but remember, this is a heavy weight of cotton. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of the weight of cotton that you'd be using if you were if you're making curtains or cushion covers. Amazing. But it's still light enough that if you wanted to quilt with it, I'm, I'm thinking cushion covers, maybe not for a quilt per se. Um, or you're going to hand sew these. Hand sewing with, with canvases is really easy because although it's a heavier fabric, it's quite a loose weave, so you can get the needle through there really easily. And then in our bundles of three, we've got more, we'll do those later on. How striking are these? The coral, the fuchsia, and an aubergine. £11.49 again for all of those. I love that colour. Now, if you went for a couple of bundles, that goes, doesn't it? And, and actually, coming up later, my favourite colour out of all of them is that one. That's so pretty. But you can see how they mix and match. They go together really well. There's a paler pink coming up later on as well. Have a look on the website on uh, sewingstreet.com and have a look at all of the different colours and mix and match them together yourself and have a good old play with them. Oh, now I've had, I've had some messages. Is that on Facebook or elsewhere? 
Um, Leslie says, morning, Debbie. I love your dress. Thank you very much. Can we have some of that material on Sewing Street, please? The only way you can have this material on Sewing Street is if I take it off and cut it up. Um, <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually a very old dress, but thank you very much. I'm glad you like it. Um, we've had a message off Janet on the fans page as well. Hi, Janet. And she says, hi, Debbie. Um, Oh, could I say happy birthday to your mum, Patricia? Happy birthday, Patricia. She's stuck inside, but she loves watching the shows. Thank you. Happy birthday, Patricia. Have a lovely day. I'll try and have a lovely day. Just keep up the good work as well. We are doing our darndest to keep up the good work. We are, there's not very many of us um, here at the moment. So in the building, there's myself and Kat. So just the two of us and Kat's behind a wall over there, two and a half metres away, to be precise. Um, Hannah's at home. Um, so Kat is directing and cameras. Um, I'm saying directing and cameras because they are at opposite ends of the room and there's a lot of running around behind the scenes. Um, Hannah's at home. She's producing. And then there'll be Hayley B. She's working at home. Hayley does uh, marketing. Um, so she'll be responsible for putting anything on Facebook. Or if, you, if you've if you subscribed to, to Sewing Street, she'll be the ones that puts out the emails to say what's coming up um, as well. And then we have Hayley M, who's our head of TV. And she'll be at home. And then, of course, there's Neil as well. Don't know what he does. <laughs> Oh, now then, I'm going to make a bag in a bit from my Satchel's Builder Bag book. This, out of all of my, at the moment, 21 published books, is the best-selling one out of all of those. Um, I think we love a satchel. There's lots of different styles in here. But if you haven't seen any of these books before, they do have something that's quite unusual, which is the template that comes with them. Oh, which I shall show you in a second. Let me just move that out of the way so it's a bit cleaner. Um, but I'll show you the bags first of all. So this is a folder, so the book does actually come out, if you want to. These are the patterns, we'll have a look at those in a sec. These are signed. At the moment, there isn't anywhere else that you can get hold of a signed book. And these are the satchels that you can make. So from one template, you can create different styles of traditional satchels. I'll take you through understanding the template, the way that it works, give you lots of ideas for different styles as well. There's 15 projects in here. I'm sure you can come up with more when you get this home. Um, there's a whole section on materials, on tools that you're going to find useful. These are tools that you will need or we, you will find useful for these satchels. So it's not a general sewing book. It's all about the satchels and it's all about bags. So hardware techniques, there's piping, there's zip insertion. You can put a zip in any one of the bags. So I'll show you once how to do the zip, because I don't think there's any point in showing you every single zip in every single bag, because they're the same. Um, so that's up to you. You can be your own designer to a certain degree, adding any, um, any kind of elements that you want. So you've got the basics. You've got your, your book of ingredients, if you like, and then you can create your own recipe from those. Oh, there's an oops section as well. So. Some of the bags like this one have a curve. What happens if your curve isn't curvy? What happens if that puckers a little bit? I'll give you some hints and tips and ideas on, on how that's caused and what you can do about it. Your fabric is, and the majority of the pattern is going to be cut on the fold. Sometimes your fabric is going to be too thick, particularly if you put your wadding on the back already. So I'll show you how to cut where you don't need to fold your fabric. As he's sewing a gusset in here, and this happens not just on, on my bikes, but you're following many patterns. As you're sewing the gusset in, sometimes this gusset can be a little bit longer than the bag. What's happened? Well, it doesn't really matter what's happened, but you don't. there are ways of correcting that, and that does sometimes happen, so don't worry about it. Fabric can move, sometimes fabric has a mind of its own, and as you're sewing particularly lots of layers or thicker layers of fabric together, they can, they can have a bit of slippage. So I'm showing you how to rectify that in here as well. Does your template slip? We've got something coming up that can help. And is your fabric too soft? Have you got a floppy bag? Well, there's a whole section on interfacings and stabilizers as well. But these are the projects. Now, every one of these has um, a map at the beginning, which will show you which part of the template that you're going to use. So this such a, for instance, is the rounded base. It's got a round flap. It's got a round pocket with a gusset, and that's the gusset that goes around um, the whole thing. 
These are straps, so that's going to be on fold, but I'll explain how you can make those straps longer. If you wanted a very long or a very short strap. You might want an adjustable strap. I'll explain how to put those on as well. So your big bow satchel I've actually got here. So it's, it's kind of a different take on a satchel. You know, you wouldn't look at that and think it's a satchel. It's more of a messenger bag. But it just gives you an idea of the kind of things that you can make. The smallest bag is this one. So this is the one that um, Carol made for her granddaughter. But from the same pattern, you're going to be able to make one as big as that. So you can see how, how different they are in style and in their size. These are all in, in the book. One pattern for everything that you see here. So shall I show you the template, show you how it works? So this is it. I brought you, the first two builder bag books were occasion bags and tote bags and you had two templates. It's taken such a long time to, to bring you these two books, because there's the, uh, the satchels and the um, backpack books that have one template. And the reason being we wanted to fold it. So it's had to be made from a special fabric that isn't going to crack, that isn't going to tear, but it can be folded in half, obviously, because it needs to fit inside a book. It's also um, slightly see-through. The first samples that we had and you know this this is one of the reasons why it takes it, it can take years to write a book there's an awful lot of work gone into this and with the templates an awful lot of research as well because the first templates that came back to me were completely clear and they looked amazing and I put it on top of the fabric and I couldn't see the template because it was completely clear so off it went back to the manufacturers again came back so they've got it um, slightly see-through See through enough so that you can fussy cut. So, if you have a pattern fabric, um, if I just put that over the top of the cover of the book, you can see through it. So, you could cut out particular areas if you're fussy cutting, that's really important. And it's wipe clean. But the main benefit of having a pattern like this is that you're not cutting up your book, you're not having to enlarge by 200%. Um, and there's no pinning. You lay this on top of your fabric and you draw around the shape. So let's take a look with my fabrics. I'm going to go that one, that one, and that one. So I'm mixing them up a bit, and I'm going to have the front of the bag made out of this. So the bag that I'm making is, so I'm using mine because this one's well thumbed through, instead of the nice new one that you have here. Where have you gone? That one. The patch pocket satchel. So that bag is exactly the same as that. Look how different fabrics make it look very different. And with this one, I've cut on the bias just to give it a little bit of difference. So all that fabric's the same. That pocket wouldn't stand out if it was cut on the grain like this is, so I just cut it on the diagonal. But over here, it's going to tell me which pieces I need to cut. So I've got the round front, that's my strap, that's the flap, and that's the pocket. So with this one, I'm just going to cut for now the round front. In fact, I need two pieces because there's the front and the back piece, both the same. So I'm going to cut these one at a time, and I'll, I'll show you why. When I've got a heavier fabric like this, I've got two pieces together and I need to cut on the fold. So if I fold both pieces in half, because of the thickness here, the top fabric is going to be slightly longer than the bottom fabric. When you imagine when it's going around the curve, it's got a longer way to go than the inside bit. So it may only be fractional, but it will be slightly bigger. So that's when we start to put the whole thing together like a jigsaw, it might not match up perfectly. If you do have very thick fabric, and this is in the oops section, instead of placing on fold, then what you would do is draw around the section that you need on the template. So say I'm doing the, the round satchel here, so I'll draw around this section, then flip this over, and then draw around the other side. So I'm not putting the fabric on fold with very thick fabric. So if you're using a tweed or something like that, that's, that may be an option for you. 
We had another message. Oh, do we need a special needle? Do we need a special foot? You don't need a special needle for this fabric. A universal needle is fine. If you're sewing through, this is um, a Bosal single-sided fusible foam. We don't have that on the show at the moment. We are looking, well, we're trying to get hold of it. Sharon, if you're watching, we need some Bosal. Um, yeah. <laughs> she watches. Um, if you're using thick fabrics like this or thick interfacing and linings, then um, you will need a denim needle. A denim needle is a stronger needle. You don't need a special foot to sew through thick fabrics, but a walking foot will help. Use a longer stitch with thicker fabrics. You'll find that the stitches are, or the seams are easier if you do that. Okay, so, now my fold's on, fold it, I'll say it's the right way. Because you can use them upside down, but that's just getting a bit too confusing. Let's move this over, you over there. There we go. I've normally iron my fabric before I start. This isn't too creased up. So I need, let me move that over a bit more. I need the round satchel section. So if you follow the curve there, that's going to take me up to here. That's the place on fold. It says place on fold and go all the way around here. Now I've got a tip for you also. We don't have it in stock at the moment, but we will be getting grippy, grippy spray back, I think, on the 15th, uh, 18th, sorry. So I'm just going to spray the back of my template, and that's going to make it stick. It doesn't make it sticky, but it makes it stick to the fabric so it doesn't slip. So let's place this over the fold of the fabric. Remember, no pins. Take my pen. This doesn't have to be an erasable pen like I'm using here because this mark is going to be inside the seam and we'll just draw around the section that we need. Oh no, that's the wrong bit. And then we'll cut it out. Oh, not with pinking shears, we don't. On the straight pieces, you can use a rotary cutter. But literally just cut around the line. Like this. I would cut out before I put any kind of fleece or backing on these as well. For the same reason as when I cut through thick fabric, it's just easier when you've got, um, got one layer. So if I put something like a foam on the back of this now, it would be very difficult to cut out the pattern accurately. So let's do another one here. So this is exactly the same. Another nice thing about this fabric, it doesn't really have a front and a back. A right or wrong side. If you get any ink on the actual template, they're wiped clean. Store them flat. You have got the pocket inside your book to keep them nice and flat. We don't want them getting creased or bent in the sunshine or anything like that. So that's the front and the back. I need to cut the lining pieces the same as well. Whoops. There we go. I'll just drop across here. Then we'll have the flap is going to be in my favourite colour. And I'll do the lining in this as well, just for speed's sake. And let's see if we can do those two at the same time so we can get to the sewing bit quicker. So now I'm following round flap. But they all fit together. So if you did a square flap on a round bag, that's no problem. This bag's got a square pocket on the front, but you could have a curved pocket. So this time it says round flap here. Look, so I'm just following the line for the round flap. But remember, these are all highlighted on the pattern as well. So there's my pattern piece. Ooh. better. Mm. 
rather a lot of layers of fabric to cut through there. So let's just trim the corner. So that's my flap. So now we can start arranging this so we can see how our bag's starting to look. So that's going to be what my bag looks like, but we need a pocket on the front as well. And let's do, let's do a fuchsia pocket. You can see how much fabric we've got left over from these kits as well. You could easily make three. So I think we might do, only do the square one. Again, I'm going to cut through two layers at a time, which I wouldn't normally recommend, as I said earlier, but I just want to get to the putting together bit to show you. So square pocket. That would be fine. Could save a little bit more fabric here. So follow the lines here. Square pocket. There's also a round pocket flap, so you could have a square pocket with a square flap on the front or a round pocket with a round pocket flap on the front. And we'll cut the strap up later on. Right, so I will need my iron on. Excuse me a second. So we'll give that a press and I'm going to just use some H640, which again we haven't got in stock at the moment, but it shouldn't be too long before that's here. I hope. So there's a pocket. For, oh, I need the gusset as well. Oh. We'll get these ironed at first, make up the pocket, then I'll cut the gusset out. And I think we should have the gusset in pink. So that's Again, you can, you can kind of put those together to see how we're looking. So that's the bag that I made up. And that's what this one's going to look like. So I think a flash of pink around the side would look really nice. Just press those creases out first. Put the best press. Hi, Jenny. Oh, she's got her Easter fabric panel. Oh, good. Oh, just ordered the book and can't wait for it to arrive so she can make some more bags. Jenny's going sewing crazy at the moment. She made herself a, a, a blouse the other day. So that's that one. This is Best Press. Have a look on the website. That helps the creases to just melt away, but without making your fabric starchy. Then we'll have H640 on the back. Like so. This is going to be quite a soft bag. If you wanted to make it firmer, then you could go down the bosal route. Let's give that blast of steam to help it. Um, you could use um, a heavy interfacing. Some of the some of the interfacings you can buy are quite leather-like, and to be honest, I'm I'm not a fan. I find them quite difficult to work with. Um, but you can buy firm stabilizers which work really well. So if you didn't want a bag that's quite as soft as this one, that would be an option for you. And then we'll add this to one side of the flap. We don't need it on two. Like so, love to see your pictures, by the way, if you've made up some satchels yourself. What did you think about um, the templates? How easy did you find them to use? I've had so much really lovely feedback about these, so I'm, I'm glad you like them. Um, Caroline. Hi, Caroline. She says, I'm making the button snap satchel on page 48 and you're stuck on step, step, step six attaching the pocket. Right. So, page 48. Oh, right.
right okay right so the pocket's got a gusset around it so you're going to um oh gosh what's the easiest way to explain that you, you make up two of the pocket pieces so you've got the pocket outer and then you've got the gusset that goes around it then you'll sew the lining together with it so you've kind of got half a bag so it'll look like um the front of the pocket and the gusset but with a lining attached to it as well. So you'll sew the two together, leave a gap in the bottom and then bag it out as if you were putting a lining in a bag, but you kind of got half a one. There's, there's the backside missing off it, if you like. And then what I like to do when I'm putting a, um, a pocket like that onto the front of my bag, because it's top stitched, is to tack it by hand first of all. So I might glue it with a glue pen, put it on there, make sure it's in the right position. And then instead of using pins, I hand tack because I find it more accurate than actually sewing uh, around pins and then sew it on the sewing machine and take your tacking stitches out. So I hope that's helped. If you have a look at, at these steps here, so that's the, the lining, and that's the lining sewn into the outer piece. That, it's, it's kind of half a bag. So you still sew the two pieces together and turn it the right side out, but you're only left with that section. And then that goes on your bag. Well, I hope that's explained. Let me know if it didn't make sense. Right, back to my bag, though. So... Just cut around all of these pieces by hand. Take your time a little bit more when you get these home. I didn't bring this all together in kind of pre-prepared pieces this morning because this fabric is so new. I've only just picked it up this morning from the studio right here. But I think it is quite nice to see things from scratch. Not sure if we'll get to finishing the whole thing, but you know, we'll do our best. But if there's any particular techniques like Carol that you need explaining, come and ask them while we're here. I like hardware as well. This one has a magnetic snap. Um, but I think hardware on bags gives it a nice shop bought look. So I'd in invest in a few D rings or rectangle rings and sliders for your straps and things like that. I also like top stitching, but you've got to be confident to top stitch around a bag because um, it's very noticeable if your top stitching is wobbly. So those are those three pieces. I'm not putting any fusible fleece on the pocket. I do need to cut out the gusset though, which I was going to do in fuchsia. There's my pocket. That's that. Now a tip for you, there is a template for your strap and there's different widths of strap as well but basically they're four inches wide in general and oh no that's the strap isn't it? I'm doing a pink strap as well get I'm getting all beside myself now I was going to do the gusset and there I'm talking about straps um, I tend to cut my straps four inches wide and on a satchel approximately 30 inches in length I find is a good length so we'll do that for the strap, which I'll do in a sec. Or you can buy shop bought webbing, which might be easier. Now I need the gusset. So this needs to be on fold. Come here. I only talk to my favourite when it misbehaves. I don't know about you. Come here. What are you doing? So there we are on fold. Then I've got round gusset on fold here. And it's all the way around the edge. So it's the largest one. So across the top of the template here. That's the hole for your zip. You're going to put a zip pocket in there. So that'll fit any of the bags. So I I kind of think I've catered for everything on there. There's my gusset and I will need some fusible fleece on the back of there as well. Just stick it on there. 
There's no rules with your interfacing either. If you think, well, actually two layers of fusible fleece would be a nice substantial bag, you use two layers. Stick one on top of another. There's no reason why you couldn't add a fusible fleece on top of a foam. Or if you've got a lightweight stabiliser and you want to make it a bit more heavy, then use two layers of it. No one's going to be peeling your bag apart to see how you made it. There we go. And you can cut your fleece with a rotary cutter all or a mat, but I tend to find it pushes the fleecy bits inside my mat and it's another cleaning job. So it might be easier to just do that with your scissors. I'm just going to go over the edges of that again and just make sure it's adhered right to the edge. There we go, right. So I'll do the pocket first of all, because that's going to be the first thing to go onto the front of the bag. So we will need our magnetic snap. Bear with me, it's in my box down here, somewhere. Oh, come here. I'm thinking of being a magnet, it sticks to everything. Sorry about this. <laughs> oh, and there's another bit to that somewhere, I lost that, never mind. We'll miss that bit off, that's, oh no, it's there, look, it's stuck to the magnet. So again, let's refer back to the measurements. And this will tell me where I'm going to fit my snap to the pocket. Um, centrally, one and a half inches from the top. So to find the centre, I'm going to fold that in half. So that's the front of the pocket. There's the centre. Then I need one and a half inches from the top. So I'm just using my mat as a guideline. That's here. So I'm going to take the back of the snap, put the hole in the middle over that dot and do two little lines like so. That's where my snap's going to go. That fabric is um, quite sturdy, so I'm not going to put any backing on it. If you're using a very fine fabric or a lighter weight of fabric, then put another little piece of fabric behind there just to make it a bit more sturdy. I'm going to make a tiny snip into each side. Make that hole small to start with. Um, and I'm going to use the fatter part on here um, because you can always make a small hole bigger but if you make yourself a big hole there you've just got a big hole and you're gonna have to start again back goes on there and I find it easier to squish those little prongs outwards doesn't really make any difference so the fatter half of the snap goes on the bag the thinner part is going to go on the flap and then we'll sew these two pieces right sides together leaving a small gap in the bottom so I can turn it the right side out Right. Quarter of an inch seam allowance for most of the bags in here, unless otherwise stated. Let's move you out the way. Got the machine coming up in the next hour, by the way. So if you've got any 720 questions, then do come and ask them. So keep these lines nice and straight because this is going to be right on the front of your bag. So wobbly stitches will be noticed. And I would normally use the same colour thread. Slip down that side. But if you are a confident top stitcher or an edge stitcher, then why not make those stitches really stand out? Across the bottom there, and snip. I like to snip across the corners to cut down on the bulk of fabric in the points, make your points a bit more pointy. And then we'll turn this through and push out the corners. I'm just looking for something to push the corners out with because I don't want to use my scissors, which I thought I'd put in my sewing box, but I can't see it there. So I'll use the end of my pen. So 
nice and pointy. Pointy, pointy, pointy. That's that, and I'm going to press that. So, if you've got your, um, your mini iron, your prim mini iron, these are ideal occasions to just have that little iron going at the side of your sewing machine. I used the big one today because I was putting the fusible fleece on. I wanted a real blast of steam and cover a large area quickly. I'm going to tuck in the hole and iron that. Like so. Then I'm going to top stitch across the edge of here just to make it a nice finish. So I can lengthen the stitch length. I'm going to go up to three mil and literally stitch across the top. You could use a decorative stitch on this one. And keep that line nice and straight. I've got that. This then goes on the front of my bag. A third of the stock of the book sold out now, by the way. Let's snip my threads off the end here. We'll have a few pins there to hold it in place. So measure that to make sure it's sitting centrally. And then we're going to sew around these three sides. And again, you'll see the stitches here. So if you're not too confident, use the same color thread so they don't stand out so much. So back tack at the end. There you go. Just to make that pocket nice and secure because it's going to be the top of that steam seam that has stress if you're putting lots of things in the pocket. There we go, go on in. Stop with your needle down when you get into the corners. I can feel actually the machine slowing down a little bit here. This is where your walking foot is going to come into effect because that's going to help sew through the layers of fabric easier. But if you don't have one, just sew slowly. And if you need to ease your fabric by pulling it a little bit, then do so. Don't pull it too much that you're going to distort your stitch line then or bend the needle. And cut. So there's my pocket on the front. And then we're going to sew. Oh, Dawn's messaged in. Hi, Dawn. Oh, thank you. She says it's a joy to watch me for three hours with a complete demo. Doing my best, trying to get it done in the hour. <laughs> thank you, Dawn. I appreciate that. Now, then, this is where your wonder clips will come into effect. These are coming up in the next hour because I do have thick fabric now. So I'm going to clip these together. Lots of clips around the curve. I think I've cut the gusset a little bit long. Just a, a, a little tip for you to make it easier as you're going into the curve. I've only got a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so don't make these big snips. Oh, come here. But if you just cut a tiny bit into the fabric as you're going around the curve, it'll help that to kind of stretch. So don't pull it, keep it nice and flat, but you can see the top fabric or the gusset fabric has opened up. So it just makes it easier to sew. And this is so much easier than pinning. The, the, you could easily make this in, um, in a faux leather, maybe some of the PU that we have on the website, in which case you need this, bag of, uh, this box of clips. So let's snip here. Mix and match your fabrics as well. I mean, we put together these bundles for you, which I adore. They are available by the half meter if you prefer, but there's no reason why you couldn't make a PU bag and then add a canvas pocket to the front. Maybe a pretty cotton lining. You don't have to use the canvas as a lining. You could make these out of denim. You could use a ticking. You could use a lightweight fabric, but do put interfacing or stabilizer on the back of it. 
I have cut that a little bit too long, but I'm not worried about that. You can always cut a too long down to size rather than a too short that you'd have to cut your bag to make it fit. And then we're going to sew all the way around the edge. So I need to take my stitch length back down again. I'm going to 2.4 on this one. And so, so we'll do a backwards there. So take out your clips as you approach them. And then I'm going to very carefully and slowly go around this curved section. Because I just want to make sure that the edges line up. And my curve is curvy. And there's no puckering. So you can see I've got gathering of the fabric here. I'm not sewing over that, I'm sewing over the seam. So as long as my seam's flat, I'm not worried about the nonsense that's going on here. So pull out any puckered areas so your stitch line lays flat. And then back down again. So coming up to the second curve here. So again, I'm slowing down. This is where you may find that your fabric grows slightly. So ideally, I would have put the walking foot on for this. So around the curve. So you can see this puckering. I'm not, not bothered about that. This is what I'm concerned about here. So this is one I'm pulling the fabric out to keep it flat. So take your time. You can always redo this if you turn it over and it's not perfect. There we go. And back on down the home run. Okay, now before we go any further, I'm just going to flip this over and make sure I'm happy with those curves. This is where I was saying in the oops section, if your curves aren't curvy, then at this point you can go around and do them again. You don't necessarily have to unpick. Then we'll put the second side on. So we'll do the flap in a minute. Where have I put you? There you are. So I'm starting at the same side. You see that? That's a bit too long. That's fine. I'm going to start at the same side as previous. And again, lots of clips. So I'm still going to snip into the, the curved sections here. These are nice little scissors. And again, coming up in the next hour, we've got a, a Fiskars section. Did I go posh again? I keep, I keep going posh. My mother would be so proud. My, uh, my mum's family, um, and in fact, I went to school in Ilkeston in Derbyshire. So they, they had, I haven't been there for a long time, but they have an accent all of their own which is quite broad. So <laughs> when, I was, when I was younger, I mean, all my mum's family, they had a big family, there were 11 kids all together. So I've got a, a lot of family in Ilkeston. Um, but my, my auntie particularly didn't want myself and my sister having this Ilkeston accent. I kind of like it, to be honest, but there you go. Um, so she used to give us elocution lessons. The number of times I had to repeat, how now, brown cow? And little poems like... Oh, what was it? Henry had... Harry had a hat and Henry had a hawk. That one. So that you had to pronounce your, your H's. And H doesn't have an H at the front of it, so it's not H. All, all, it's all gone back in time. OK, so that's pinned around the edge. And then we'll sew again in the same manner. So again, we take this out. Do you know when I, when I showed you the bundles and there was um, a navy, an ivory and an ochre, that ochre is selling really well on its own. Do you want a quick look at it? Oh, there you go. 
is that one it's going really quickly on its own if you buy it on its own you buy by the half meter so you can buy meterage if you needed more than uh, more than just a half a meter in length and turn around that curve still keeping it nice and flat the bit that would crumple now is on the underside so just feel your way along the edge making sure that where you're sewing the seam is flat Uh, it may seem really time consuming to sit and put all of these clips in, but please do. It's really important in instances like this that you get the fabrics lining up perfectly and you get those seams nice and flat. Because if they're not, your bag will be a little bit skew -if. Right. So that's that. And again, I've got one bit that's a little bit longer than the other, so I'm simply going to cut that off. And that goes in there, and that goes in there. Do you know, I have made so many bags over the years. I must have made my first ever bag when I was at school, which was a PE bag. In fact, my first ever project sewing-wise at school, because I sewed at home and making dolls clothes and things like that, um, it was um, a, a cookery basket. I hated that cookery basket. A big wicker thing. The boys didn't have to have them. And they had this cover on them that we had to make. So that was probably my first experience of bags. But I wrote um, my first bag book was So Brilliant Bags, um, which is still available. And gosh, that, that just took off. Everybody wanted to make bags. Um, I have a YouTube channel with uh, lots of bag tutorials on there and the number of hits that those bag tutorials get is amazing. People just love making bags. And I'm one of them. I like figuring them out. I like working out how to make things, how to put that gusset in, where to position the pocket, where am I going to put a zip? Shall I put some pockets down the side here? I like the, the kind of design element if you like. Uh, let's do the flap. So that's the outside of the bag. You can see how it looks and that's how the flap's going to go on. So I won't have time to do the lining as well, but we can put the flap together. And have we got a text? Oh, oh, hang on. Is it a WhatsApp? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, somebody sent in a, a picture of a small bag. Oh, that is lovely, what a lovely fabric. She's used, um, like, oh, this is, where is this, is it Heather? She's used daisy flowers, so there's yellow and bees on the bottom of the bag, and then on the flap she's used um, uh, daisies, which is really pretty. Oh, thank you for that. Um, oh, Hayla sent me the same picture, thank you. Right. I love seeing your pictures. The best thing about my job, and I, I say this so often, um, is the feedback. It's when you come through and you say, I didn't think I could do that and I did it. Or you've taken one of my designs. I've lost the other half of my magnetic snap now. Um, you take one of the designs and you make it your own, you make it different, you make it bigger, you add bits and bobs to it. That's going to have to go on later. So, at this point, I would put the second. I did have the thin bit, didn't I? Because I pointed it out. That's the back of it. Do you know, I don't move. Oh, well. At this point, I would put the, the thin part of the magnetic snap onto the lining section of the flap, but we're not going to do that. Because <laughs> can't find it. So these two pieces go right sides together and we'll sew around the edge. There are ways of fitting magnetic snaps after you're finished. So I'll do that later. Um, if I... So I'm just going rather quickly because we're running out of time. It's a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a skill. Just going to trim the curves back on this one, just to make it a bit less bulky. This is where pinking shears would come in handy, which I do have, but what I would do in that case, because sometimes I have made up bags completely, finished them, and I thought, I forgot to put the snap on. But if you get to this stage, you think, oh no, I should have put the snap on the lining. 
this is what you're going to do. So I will top stitch around this as well. I'm going to drop the back of the magnetic snap inside. So it's not in the right place or anything, but then when I find the other half, I can fit it to the lining bit and I can manoeuvre it. So I can put the prongs just through the back and manoeuvre the back in there and then squish the legs out. So it's not the end of the world. Let's increase the stitch length again. And and you go. And just top stitch around the edge. Um, if you need a little bit of help, top stitching in a straight and even line. If you have an invisible zipper foot, no, not an invisible zipper foot, if you have a blind hem foot for your sewing machine, or a quarter inch foot with a guide, or an over edge foot, they've got guides on them, so you can put that on and just line up the edge of the fabric against the guide. Top stitching gives it a nice professional finish. Put your stitch back down again. This then is sewn into the back of the bag with the padded side on the outside so this bit wouldn't have the snap the snaps here so it's that way up and clip across here and so there so within the seam allowance on this one because this is only a tacking stitch because we will be going around this part again when we put the, um, the lining in, which I'm not going to have time to do. Right, so that's as far as we've got. So that's how the bag's going to look. You can see it's quite soft because I've used H640. Before I put the lining in, I'd make up the strap, or if you're buying a, a, a shop bought strap, that's going to be an inch wide by the time it's been folded. So you're going to sew this to the sides of the bag facing downwards. The lining is made up in exactly the same way as the outer, but without the pocket, or you could add a pocket, or you could add a zip pocket on the inside, all of those instructions in the book. So when your handle is on, all of this is dropped inside the lining, so the right sides are together. Um, the lining will have a gap in the bottom, so you can turn it the right side out, sew around the top, bag it out, as in turn it the right side out, push the lining inside, and there you've got your finished bag. So if I just show you quickly here. So with the strap, I like to top stitch on both sides. There's no wadding or anything inside there. I don't think it needs it. So that's sewn facing downwards to the outside of the bag. Let's take the stuffing out. All of this is dropped inside the lining. I've left a gap at the bottom so I could turn it the right side out, turn the whole thing through, push the lining inside, and then I like to top stitch all the way around the outside with the handles up. Top stitch all the way around the outside and that gives it a nice finish. And that's your bag done. So I think that was from scratch. Um, so I hadn't even got hold of the fabric till this morning. So right from drawing out the pattern, and that's less than an hour. So you could easily make a satchel like this within a couple of hours if you're an experienced sewer. If you're brand new, that's probably going to be the easy... No, actually, this one's the easiest satchel in the book because it doesn't have a gusset at all. So if you're a complete beginner, then maybe that one would be the one to start with because there's no lining up of gussets or anything like that. And you could make that in within an hour easily. But, do you know... I like taking my time. Oh, this is another different style as well. This one has the same pattern, but we've got a tie at each side, so it has a very different look to a satchel. And I've just plaited some cording to make the strap for that one. So you can use these as quite an evening bag as well. So 15 different designs, all using the same template, different sizes. You can quilt them, you can add to them, you can use whatever kind of fabrics you like with them. So you really can make these your own. There's a different style look. Same pattern. So one pattern will make every single one of these bags. And again, I'm sure when, um, when you get yours home, you're going to come in with more designs as well. Um, Hayley says, oh, oh. 
Now, this is a bag made from Debbie's, Debbie's satchel bag for a friend who likes hairs. Oh, I wish you could see these. Um, she's made, um, this is Julie, and she's made, she's made a bag using a plique, and it's all hills with a hair running across it, and it looks like she's quilted through it as well. That is amazing. Thank you so much for that. And then on the Sewing Street page, oh, isn't technology amazing? Pose, video posts. Oh, Christine's made a bow bag from the tote bag books in duck fabric. That is gorgeous. Oh, oh, I love your messages. Thank you. Now, I was saying earlier on, uh, feedback is, it, it just gives me such a buzz. And it's, it's so nice to see your pictures. It makes it, makes it all worthwhile. This is, this is actually really hard work. Books take a long time to produce, on average, 18 months. There's a lot of... Um, backwards and forwards and because the, the way that it was my husband's a photographer um, and it, it works so well for us because you can have lots and lots of pictures in the book more so than most project books because this is me making the bag as I go along so they're not samples that are made up and steps that are made up and then photographed all in a day this is all taken as I'm making the bag so if I feel that there are more images that are needed we can put more pictures in there if I feel that something needs explaining a little bit more or we need to go closer on something then we can do that as we go so we come up with all of these, we measure everything, work out the fabric, um, write all of the instructions, then off it goes to Search Press, my publishers, and my editor, who was Becky, for this book. And then she will go through things and start asking questions. That doesn't make sense to me. Are you sure you got that measurement right? And then she makes everything grammatically correct, because I'm sure my punctuation marks are all wrong when I write this out. So there's a lot of backwards and forwards there until we're sure that this is absolutely right. Then the whole thing goes to a separate proofreader and she comes back with even more comments. Oh, I think we should reword this and I don't understand this. And double check that measurement because I don't think you got that one right. And with these books, particularly because you've got the templates as well, I told you earlier how difficult that was to actually produce this and to be able to go inside the book like so. Then it goes off for print. And then about six months later, we get, um, we get the first sample back. So there's, there's a lot of work behind it. So I'm so glad that you like it. So let me pop that back in there because that's mine. I don't want to lose that. Got the elastic around there. Now with the, the fabrics, oh, I'm making such a mess again. Who's in tomorrow? Is it John? Oh, we can tidy up. That's fine. Right. Let me show you the big bundles. Because this fabric is ideal for these bags. I, I, honestly, I love it. I've bought loads. Seriously, loads. So in here, you've got, these are all of the pinks. I'm just pinching that one from there because that comes with it as well. So, all of, I love this one. I just love that shade. It's really unusual, really pretty. So we've got um, like an aubergine and a coral and a fuchsia and the lavender, which is, it's got a, a gray tone to it. It's beautiful. And then a really soft pink as well. There's two and a half meters there for 19 pounds 49. That is such value for money. That's the kind of price you'd expect to pay for cotton. And although it is cotton, it's a heavy cotton canvas. It's perfect for bag making. It's perfect for um, interior design, for curtains. Um, these are half metre bundles, so that's all you're going to get. If you go for the bundle, you can buy those by the half metre if you want more meterage, if you will, as well. But bags, it, oh, they're, they're perfect. And they're gorgeous and they're so pretty. Let's have a look at your neutrals as well, because this is another big bundle. We've got black, we've got the dark grey. You have the natural, which has got the seeds in it, and the pale grey. So these are the ones, when I first saw them, I just thought, got to make a bag out of those. Doesn't that look so stylish, though? They're very elegant, very sophisticated colours, but they work so well together. Um, do you want to have a look at the nauticals? These are a set of three. I'd, if I could, I'd just take all of them. Red, white and blue. No, I'd love to take them all home, but I have bought them. Um, £11.49 for one and a half metres. That price is so low. 
So red, white and blue there. Then we have the blues, and these remind me of the colours of the sea. So there's a teal, there's a navy, and you've got the pale blue there as well for £11.49. It's soft to work with, though. It's not a, a stiff canvas. like you do. When you see the word canvas, I, I think you know something that you paint on, which is really heavy. And these aren't. They're soft, but they're thick. So they're a really nice weight to them. You could make um, a nice summer jacket out of those. It doesn't have to be for bag making. It's just... What, at the when I first saw it, I was just like, oh, I can make a bag with that. OK. Now, all of these, remember, are available by the half metre. So if you go onto the website onto sewingstreet.com, you can take a look at all of the colours that we have for you. And if you need to buy 10 metres of something, order 20, and we'll send you them all in one long piece. So you can make whatever you like out of them. OK, we're going to go to a quick break. We've got a tools hour coming up next, and we're going to be featuring this amazing 720 sewing machine. We'll see you again shortly. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan, and I'm here to show you what we need to get ready for our sew along on the 18th of April. You're going to see a hyperlapse video of me doing really, really quick work on how to make this wonderful quilt to get you ready if you'd like to sew along with us and what you need to do. So the first thing you're going to do, either using a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter, whichever you feel more comfortable with, you're going to separate all 48 of your different strips, being the uh, sunrise, sunset, the azure and the berry, break those all up and keep them in order from dark to light in each colourway. In the way that I did the quilt for the show, I had dark berry to light berry and then I decided to go light blue to dark blue and then the dark sunset to the light sunset. So now you would have taken your design rolls and you would have cut them all into these amazing strips that go from light to dark. I piled them up in half going from light to dark as I cut them off the roll. So I have the, the berry one, uh, no this is the sunset one, I have the azure and I have the berry one. That's the sunset, the azure and the berry one. So what I'm doing now is I've decided that these ones are quite close together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these ones from light to dark, but I'm going to turn these round and do dark to light. So what I'm going to join, do is take one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, then one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, and just go in order and sew them all together. So these are, when I say sew them together, these are going to be the short ends here. So that will be sewn together to one of these. This will be sewn to one of those, those will be one of the, on the short end. Once you've separated your blocks and you've decided that you're going to now stitch these all together, you're going to take the short ends of your strips and you're going to sew those together. The way I decided to do it was I went from orange, blue, berry, and I kept that order going. So you had a dark orange, light blue, dark berry, and decreasing all the way around until you had a light orange, dark blue, light berry. Once you've now sewn your short ends together and you have a 1700 odd inch piece of fabric, you're going to take one side and you're going to cut 20 to 30 inches off one side of this fabric long strip. Reason being is that if you don't, you're not going to have any movement of the fabric throughout the quilt and it will just be the same as sewing the whole grid together and that isn't going to be what we need. Once you've done that, you're going to take the two raw edges of your fabric, which aren't sewn together, put them right sides together and you're going to sew along one side of the fabric. Fabric. So after you've done all of that, you're going to come to the end and there will always be a kink, a curve, a wobble, don't worry. Literally fold in half as close as you can get it to half and cut it. I know everybody just freaked out a little bit, but I promise you it doesn't matter. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to sew this off to get to the very end. You just fold those to the edge there and you sew to the end. At this point, you're now going to take your rotary cutter and your ruler and you're going to square the edge of your, of your um, pieces off. This is how far you'll need to get to be able to join me in the sew along and sew along with me on the 18th at about 9, 9.30. So please, any questions, drop me a line on social media and thank you so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the 18th.
Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello there, good morning, welcome back to Sewing Street Time, Debbie Shaw, and this is the last of our live hours this morning. It's been so busy over the last couple of hours, it's been lovely to have your company this morning, and it's been so nice to have all of your messages, so many people have messaged in. We'll go through them all after the show if we don't get time to within the show. But keep on coming, it's lovely to hear from you. Um, now we did have a message yesterday saying, when are you going to get that rainbow fabric panel back? Well, it's here right now, we did it for you. So if you missed out yesterday, we get it right now. Look at this, we have 16 strips of two and a half inch wide fabric pieces, which you can use for, well, you can use it for your jelly roll race, but what a, what a lovely project you're going to make to have a rainbow hanging up in your window in these very strange times we live in. Um, uplifting and happy, beautiful colors that just shade from the darkest of corals through to citrus, lemons and limes. And then we've got the blues at the bottom turning into purple hues. So they blend beautifully. Um, use them as they are. You know, these are really wide as well. So you've got um, 140 centimetres in width. So twice what you're seeing here. Um, and it's a metre in length as well. Um, so you can use these for patchwork, you can use them for quilting, you, you could use it as one big sheet of fabric just as it is. So it could be cushion covers, it could be any kind of homewares. You've got a good weight of fabric as well, it's 100% cotton and it's UK printed too. But I'm not surprised they sold out once already. A lot of rainbows around at the moment, it seems to be everybody's favourite thing to cheer everybody up. So why not? Jump on that bandwagon, what a nice bandwagon to be on. And it's only £14.99. Now we did bring you an early bird earlier on, which is this one. So, I've got so much for you in these three hours. Um, this, I shan't open your toilet, but you've got two and a half metres of off-white or ivory fabric at a ridiculously low price. This is just £13.96. So you're paying for two metres, which is still very affordable. And we're giving you a half a metre absolutely free. It's linings, it's backing fabric. It does come in two and a half pre-cut pieces. So if you ordered more than one, you would have two pre-cut pieces. But there's plenty there to maybe make the backing of, a, I don't know, an, an apron, the lining on a jacket. It's nice crisp cotton that you can make a lovely summer blouse with or little girls' dresses. But to make your own stash go further, this is a real stash buster of a cotton fabric but we've only got a handful left now so I just wanted to give you a reminder while we have that this is a reduced price item that we bring you at eight o'clock for all of you early birds that are up with us at the crack of dawn and um, and we keep it at this price until it sells out that's not going to last for very much longer I'd multi-order those if I were you and take advantage so your rainbows again this is a back in stock so only sold out yesterday but due to popular demand we have it back for you so again, if you want to order, it's sewingstreet.com if you have a look on the website, or you can order on the phone lines, which is 0800 001 4433, and those are uh, lovely UK-based people that are going to be answering your phone there. 
Um, okay, now in this hour, we're going to be looking at tools. So we've seen lots of fabric over the last couple of shows. Now we're going to be looking at the tools that you need to, to get creative with your fabric. And then later on, we're going to be featuring the 720 sewing machine. So if you're in two minds, if you've seen the show before, maybe you've watched um, one of the shows on YouTube and you say, oh, I'd, I'd quite like the machine, but I'm not sure about, or I just need to know then come and ask the questions now on our Facebook page, which is um, Sewing Street TV. Go to the, um, the visitor post page. I've got it open right now. And um, yeah, put your comment or your question on there or your pictures. Come and share with us what you're doing this morning. Um, oh, no. OK, rainbow panel, 21 remaining now. So I only sold out yesterday. It's going to go again today. If you want it, you need to be ordering right now, OK? Um, we had a message from Caroline just at the end of the last hour. Love the drawstring bag. I've got half a metre of Japanese fabric. Would it be enough to make it? It would be enough to make the outside. You're going to need some more fabric for lining. Holy bird. Fine. Rainbow fabric. Oh, imagine a bag made out of the rainbow fabric. You can either cut them up and sew them back together again, or you can sew them as they are, make little pin tucks. So you see the white bit like so, so just sew along the edge here, or you can sew them with the white on the inside, so just join them together as they are, so it looks like you've got seams across there, well you have really, but you know, they're already lined up, or you could just use them with the white panel there as well. I'm seeing rainbows all around your house, I'm seeing rainbow cushion covers, I'm seeing a big rainbow hanging up in the window, I'm seeing you wearing a rainbow apron, seeing the dog with a rainbow scarf on, OK, that's, that, that's going to go there. Let's take a look at some of the other bits and bobs that we have for you on the show. And there's lots. Where shall we start? The Wonder Clips that are used in the previous show. This is a box of 50. And these are perfect for occasions where you don't or you can't use pins. So if you're sewing through laminated fabric, you won't be able to use pins because they'll leave holes. And it can be very thick and difficult to pin. Hurt your fingers. But with the clips, these clips just hold the layers together. I tend to use them a lot if I'm gluing things to hold um, the items while I'm gluing. So, for instance, the end of a bag handle, if I want to make that a little bit more secure when it goes through a D-ring, um, I'll put glue on before I sew, and this holds the layers together. If I'm using a faux leather or a PU, this is easier than pinning because I can't actually get the pins to go through thick fabric. These hold them together. They're clover, and I consider clover to be the highest quality. Clover invented these. They know what they're doing. And as in high quality, the springs just go on and on and on. I've never actually broken one of these. And I've been using clover wonder clips for years and years and years. Um, lots of different colours, so they stand out against whatever colour fabric you're, that you're using and just really easy to use. They have a flat base, so that's going to go on the bottom. So pull them out as you approach your sewing machine, and then you've got a curved top, so you can fit thicknesses of fabric underneath there as well. But um, you'll never go back from using these. My daughter does a lot of dressmaking, and she uses these instead of pins a lot of the time for, for dressmaking too. £28.99. Always really busy. We've got more on reorder, just in case, because that wouldn't be surprised if they go. Um, we have some hair clips, clover quilting pins, so fine I couldn't find them. So these are your quilting pins, I'm going to open them up, how rebellious is that? I'm going to use Fisker scissors. <gasps> Two colours in here, so you have amber and emerald. It's a challenge to get into the box, but once you're in, <laughs> these are very fine and very long as well. And I like a long pin because then you can go in and out and in and out and in and out a few times. You have a glass head pin in two different colours. So again, that's designed to stand out against different colours of fabric. But also, if you happen to touch that with an iron, it's not going to melt because it's glass. And they're very fine. So they're not going to leave holes in finer fabric. So I, I 
I love those kind of pins. I use these and flower head pins more than anything, even when I'm dressmaking. Dressmaking pins tend to be fine long steel pins. I can't see them a lot of the time, but it's the fineness of the pin that's really important because if you are sewing with a finer fabric, you don't want to be leaving holes in there. But I like the long pin as well, even if I'm only sewing a seam allowance, you know, regular seam allowance, it just means I can see them and I can pull them out easily. So pins aren't just pins. Pins are a very important tool in your, in your sewing toolbox. And I think we all have um, favorite types of pins to use. Maybe not always the appropriate pin for the job, as in these are quilting pins, but I'd use them in dressmaking. I'd use them in bag making. I'd use them when I've got a lot of fabric that I want to, to put on the pin because they're so long. So you use the pin, and it's the same with needles. There's nothing to say that you can't use that embroidery needle to, to do some sewing with, some other sewing with, some quilting or something. You use them for whatever you like. No one's going to know. Oh, look at that bag. She used the wrong pins for that. These are my favourite ones, which are the flower heads, because I can see them when I drop them on the floor, and it invariably happens. And I can make them out in my... Um, Pin cushions. Um, my pin cushions tend to be patterned fabric, so I can actually see where the pins are as well. They'll lay flat when you're um, when you're sewing. Don't sew over pins. Always make sure that you pull them out. Um, but I, I can see them. That's the main thing for me. If I drop them on a carpet, heaven forbid, I don't have carpets in my sewing room for that reason. Um, but you can easily see them. I wouldn't be able to see a steel pin as well as I can see a flower head pin. And again, they're long, so they're thicker than the quilting pins. But that also means that they're stronger. So maybe sewing through lots of layers of fabric, and particularly if you are doing things like bag making or you're sewing thick fabrics, they're going to be a stronger non-bendy pin. Those are very fine ones. So these won't leave holes because they're very fine and long. These are a little bit more sturdy. But I'd still go for both. And different colours so they stand out against your fabrics as well. That's those, okay. More rubbish for John. We have easy action scissors. And these are sprung, so they spring open. Because normally with scissors, and they're these aren't the same size, the closing of the scissors is easy. If you've got problems with your hands, it's the opening that's going to be the problem in general. So these have the spring. They lock as well, so you can lock them closed. But the spring helps you open them, so all you're going to do is squeeze closed. And they're, they're not difficult. It's not a strong spring. But nice little snips. So when you're cutting off small threads off the edge of your fabric, absolutely perfect. If you're just trimming down even the, the smallest of threads, see how they're sharp right up to the point? So you can trim away tiny bits. If you're an embroiderer, if you're doing hand sewing, English paper piecing maybe, and you want to get very, very close to the area that you're doing, if you've only got the tiniest bit of fabric to trim away for accuracy, not many scissors you could get that kind of accuracy with. So literally that's a fringe that's coming off, it looks like snow, tiny, tiny amounts. So I think you'll find them really useful, and I love the way that they lock as well, because they are sharp, so we are thinking safety there too. So we've got a few pairs of Fiskars. Do you want a bit of nonsense? I like a bit of nonsense. Fiskars were, um, or the foundry was developed in, I think it was 1640, and it was 1849 when they started making scissors. In 1967, Fiskars were the first company to develop a process of putting plastic handles onto scissors. Before that, there were metal handles and they were really heavy, but they were never meant to be orange. And orange is kind of the trademark Fiskars colour, that's their branding. But originally, um, the, the first samples, the prototypes, um, were asked to be made in green, black and red. And then they were going to be put to the Fiskars team to say which colour do you like best. But whoever was running the plastics factory happened to have some orange in there first of all. So he just got rid of the, the orange plastic by making a pair of scissors and then made the green, the red and the black. So there was an orange option as well. And the staff decided that orange and black were their favourites. Lots of pairs of scissors out there were black at the time because the metal handles used to be painted black. So that's why they went for orange. So it's, it was quite... Um, quite an accident. And that was in Finland in a village called Fiskars. So it wasn't Mr Fiskars that invented them. <laughs> uh, right, these are your shears. These are left-handed. And never, 
I never realised what a difference having right or left-handed scissors were until I bought a pair of left-handed scissors by mistake and I actually got blisters trying to use them so I, I can really understand why left-handed people who don't get so many scissors made for them can get really frustrated. So these are for you. So they're comfortable, they're ergonomic, they're red, um, and they're a really nice um, dressmaking shear. So we've got 21 centimetres in length, so that's from the end of the, the handle here to the point. Nice long straight blade, so you get the full length of the cut if you're cutting larger items. And again, sharp, right to the point. It's always my test for scissors. Not, you know, how, how well will they cut on a long strip, but how tiny a snip can I make when I'm cutting my fabric? Because like you saw with the, with the bag in the previous show, if I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I want to snip into it, I only want an eighth of an inch maximum. I only want to cut halfway into that seam allowance. And these will do it. A lot of the time, if you have scissors that aren't up to scratch, you'll be trying to cut with this end of the scissors. And you'll never get it. But you'll do too much. You'll never get the accuracy that you do with a nice sharp point on a pair of scissors. So again, those are left handed. They're only £14.99. I'd grab those quickly. You don't very often see left handed scissors. Um, and at £14.99, you've got a great price for a pair of shears as well. Um, we also have Fisker's embroidery snips. So not necessarily just for embroidery. For small items, um, these are left or right handed, so they, they multitask. Um, and again, really, really sharp, right up to the point of those. So for embroidery, uh, if you've got um, jump threads, so if you're machine embroidering and you go from one area to another and you have a jump thread that needs cutting, these are ideal because they'll get right into the thread and snip off tiny amounts. Um, if you're doing any kind of hand sewing, maybe you're a cross stitcher, again, these are going to be perfect size for you. And of course, if we ever do get to travel again, um, these are going to be a great size to take to a workshop. They're handbag sized scissors and those are £13. And 99 pence. Oh, I, love, I love a box. <laughs> I love a box of goodies and things to play with and lots of new tools. These are all on the website. We've got quilters tape, we've got quilters gloves, we've got the hero tools for creasing, we've got the roll and press that's always really popular for pressing seams open, we've got spare blades and we've got the the pivoting rotary cutter, and we've got the storage box as well. What we don't have is enough time to go through everything. We've only got about 40 minutes left on the show. And I we've, got freezer, we've got freezer paper. Getting excited over freezer paper. I get so excited over this machine, honestly. Let me shift some of this lot out of the way to give it a little bit of space that it deserves. Now you've seen this machine a few times and it, it has been really popular. Um, this is the next machine on from the machine that I have at home, which is a Janome 6600. Um, this is the Elna 570, Janome Elna, same thing. Um, but this has more features than the one that I've got. Oh, and I can't justify it. Nope, can't justify it. I'd love to, but you know. But there's so much that comes with it. Now, importantly, it's an Elna. Elna are a British-based company. They're based in Stockport in Cheshire. They give you a two-year warranty. They're very nice people. And be rest assured, you have a huge peace of mind when you buy from Elna that you do have support there as well. I've actually been there in, in the in reception picking the machine up when um, the people have been phoning in asking questions. And they, they will find the answer for you. They're very nice people. So a peace of mind of buying a machine at this price point is really important, I think. You want to know that you're not on your own. You know, it's, it's not going to be from Sewing Street or from Elna, there you've got it now, we don't want to know you anymore, on with the next one. We want to give you that support and your help as well. I got so excited with this box. When you open up the box, say, oh, what have I got in here? There's so many goodies. This is um, your accessory box with compartments to keep your feet in, compartments to keep spare bobbins in, and a whole selection of feet. So I'll run you through quickly because we have done these on shows before, and most of the feet have been demonstrated as well. So if you haven't seen those, take a look on our YouTube channel on Sewing Street on YouTube and search Elna 570, and there's quite a few shows there. So you have your buttonhole foot, you have your extra fast... Um, 
straight stitch foot. We have an open toed satin stitch foot, we have a closed toed satin stitch foot, we have a rolled edge foot, we have a quarter of inch foot with a guide, that's what I was talking about, top stitching in the previous hour. You have a blind hem foot, again with a guide, closed toe foot, we have an over edge foot, we have an adjustable free motion foot with a closed toe and open toe and a toe that you can use for quarter of an inch um, echo quilting. We have a button placement foot, you've got a zipper foot, that's your open toed foot. We have a walking foot, we have an extra plate to go with your buttonhole foot for sewing through thicker fabrics. We have a straight stitch plate and a high performance straight stitch plate. This machine will sew up to 1250 stitches a minute, it's really, really fast. We've got another free motion embroidery foot, I'm going to be using that shortly. We have a seam guide to help you sew in a straight line. And then this is all of your spool holders and your um, spare needles and bits and bobs that you would expect to find with any sewing machine. So that's what I want to, an extra thick um, seam lifter for sewing over things like the seams on the side of jeans or if you're sewing on a button and you want to make a shank. Your instructions are included and it's a very easy to understand manual and these are your stitches. So these are chapter because there's so many of them so you choose modes so these are utility stitches, decorative stitches, stitches to sew different fabrics, stretch fabrics, over edge stitching for woven fabrics, blind hemming stitches and for stretch fabrics, buttonholes of different styles, uh, stitch to sew buttons on, darning stitches, as lots of stitches that are great for applique, for stitching in the ditch, for decorating, for smocking, for heirloom work. Um, these are all decorative stitches which you can use for faggoting as in joining pieces of fabric together. More stitching in the ditch, you've got satin stitches, which you can adjust in length as well. Sorry, I'm going through these really quickly, but we have done these before, and I do want to show you some free motion embroidery, which is the one thing that we haven't done. We have the professional grade needle plate. The machine will recognise when this, uh, this um, throat plate goes on and tell you to only use one foot and prevent you from using any of these stitches which aren't appropriate. You can only use a straight stitch. If you want to do fast sewing, then put this plate on. You won't believe how quickly this machine goes. On the other side of the board here, and this just sits in the top of the machine, you have the alphabet in two different fonts and then we've got numbers and we've got punctuation marks on there as well. The machine also has a memory so you can join these together but when you get it home I suggest you just play. You can stitch out individual stitches so you can make lovely little decorative effects. Stitch, love, handmade, these are all one stitch so I haven't written this, that is a stitch. I've never seen a washing line on the same machine before. I think that's so cute. So you can be making borders and decorations, sew these onto ribbons, around hemlines, across the top of pockets and collars. You can join all of the words together. You can pick out individual pairs of scissors, shoes. I love the notions, the needles and the bobbins. But then you can join them together. So you can remember, although the machine can remember, um, letters that you put together, you can join together different stitches like this, you can mirror image so you can create lots more effects than just the stitches that are on there. You can elongate some of the satin stitches as well and this fills in the gap. So it's the same stitch as this but it's drawn out by five times and the machine adds extra stitches so you get a solid line. Those are some of the buttonholes. And then this is twin needle sewing. There's a button on the machine that you select when you are twin needle sewing, um, which prevents the needle from swinging too far from one side to the other. So for instance, that's the same stitch number as this one, but if I stitched without selecting the twin needle button, and I got this, I'd break the needle on the side of the foot. So the machine automatically narrows the stitch so the needles fit inside the presser foot so it's not going to damage itself. In fact, there's, there's lots of occasions where um, if you try and sew a buttonhole without putting the side lever down um, or you've got the wrong foot plate on, the machine will alert you. It'll, it'll chirp just to let you know that there is a problem there. In the manual, there's also um, a troubleshooting guide. So if something does happen, you think, oh, that's not happened before, I don't, I don't know what that is, then do take a look in the manual, which is very easy to understand. But come and have a quick look at the machine. And we'll do, I'll, I'll give you a very quick tour um, and then we'll get on to some free motion because that's where I left off when we ran out of time last time.
It has a knee lifter, so perfect for quilting. And I'll show you really quickly the foot pedal, which is huge, which means you can find it. And the lead actually winds up and goes inside, so it's nice and neat for storage as well. So I mentioned different modes. And, oh, where's my board? That goes in the back up here. So I can see. <laughs> see it at all times. It drops down for storage. It goes in, in one of two holes on the back. Um, these are the numbers that you're going to choose your stitch from. The memory, you just click on memory if you want to join together different icons and, uh, or letters. And the C is for cancel. So if I make a spelling mistake, I can simply go back. As you come on up, you've got a key button. Now that's going to stop the machine from working. So if you're winding the bobbin up or you're changing your foot, then press the lock button uh, and then just really quickly we have you've got a memory there so you can store your joined up letters you've got an independent bobbin winder um, this is the elongation stitch mirror imaging that's the twin needle button on this one i can adjust the stitch width and the stitch length so that just changes the look of the screen on the screen i've got a Recommendation for which foot to use, the tension that's been preset, this, an image of the stitch there, but I've also got a reminder of the, most of the stitches that you're going to use, your most popular stitches. Over here you've got a speed control and a start-stop button, so you don't need to use the foot pedal. Um, but if you're quite new to sewing and you want to slow down a little bit, if you feel more confident sewing slower, you can reduce the speed by using this button here, even when you're using the foot pedal. We've got a thread snipper, needle up down position, a lock button, reverse button, tension on the front. I, I like a machine with a tension on the front. It's something a little bit more professional and industrial to me. And an easy threading system as well. Drop in bobbin. Um, one of the nice features about this is that this is cast aluminium. It's absolutely solid. The top is a plastic casing, but this is metal. So I, f I actually find the machine quite difficult to lift up and down. And I love the fact that it's so heavy because it's sturdy and it's solid because this machine is going to sew at speed and it's going to punch that needle through layers and layers of thick fabric. So it needs to be a really heavy, sturdy machine. Um, I did have an email, I can't remember your name, I'm sorry, asking what are the differences between the 680, which is on the, uh, on the website, and the 720. They have a lot of the same features, they have a lot of the same feet, they have a lot of the same stitches, but this is a bigger, heavier, sturdier machine. Um, 680 isn't cast. <laughs> I think I've had a message. The 680 isn't cast. I love it when you send your messages through, so I'm, I'm going to keep checking on those. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Pam. I'll have a read through in just a second. Um, it's... It's more robust and quicker than the 680 is what I'd say, but have a think about your price points and what you prefer. And have a look at the details of all the machines that we have on the website while we're there as well. Now I didn't mention free motion embroidery. Um, so we're gonna do it. If I can remember where I put the foot. Let's use that one. There's a screwdriver included in here as well. Come here. So most of the feet are snap-on feet, which means that there's a little button at the side here and when you press it, your foot drops off. But with your walking foot and your free motion embroidery foot, we need to take off the foot holder or the ankle. Oh, that's quite loose. So simply unscrew this from the side and then this one drops on. The other free motion foot that comes with the machine has a bar that goes on top of the needle screw and the needle clamp on here, but this one doesn't have one. And we'll just tighten that up really quickly. And then I'll need to drop the feed dogs. And there's a lever on the side around here. You can't see that from where you are, but it's just a lever that you pull over. And the feed dogs disappear inside here. I'm going to change the colour of my thread to red as well, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not change the bottom, I'm just going to change the top. And show you how quick this is as well. So free motion embroidery, if you're a quilter you can do this freehand. Um, you can darn, so you can mend holes in jeans and things like that with your free motion foot. You can do lettering and monogramming. You could literally embroider over the top of a printed piece of fabric, whether that's printed with 
words, writing, pictures, photographs. So it's a little bit like the painting by numbers exercise. Or you can just scribble away and go freehand. Whatever you do, it's loads of fun. So I've got some of the canvas fabric, which is quite thick, so I'm not going to put a backing on it. So I've got a straight stitch, foot down, foot on the speed control. Why am I beeping? Oh, it's just letting me know that the feed dogs are down. So an image of the feed teeth came up just to let me know. I want the feed dogs down, so it'll carry on saying that. And then we move the fabric around. If you are doing a lot of free motion embroidery, I would highly recommend the quilter's gloves that we also have in the show because they're going to help you guide the fabric around easier than without having them. So it grips onto them. You can also buy mats that go underneath to make that a little bit easier as well. So you're just going to move your fabric in any which direction you like. I think I might have run out of bobbin thread. Oh no, it's just jumped out. Why are you there? That's it. Have a play with the tension if need be. Sometimes, depending on what kind of fabric you're using, you may need to adjust that tension slightly. Most of the time on my machine, I don't. I'm in the gloves. Makes it a lot easier, so I'm going to use them. And if you are using a finer fabric, make sure that you use a stabiliser on the back of some description. I like to just use a tear-away stabiliser. That's better. So the gloves will keep the grease off your fabric from your fingers and um, it will also help you move the fabric a lot easier. So just keep moving up, down, round and round however you want to. I have an error. Do you know, I, I quite like it when these kind of things happen because they'll happen to you at home at some point and I'd hate you to think that you've done something wrong. I'm going to re-thread and just make sure that all of the tensions are caught. I've caught the tension in the bottom there. Let's go around again at the top. But don't worry about things like that because the machine stops and alerts you. It's not going to let you carry on doing something that it's not happy with. And I do like that in the same machine. It's almost like it knows what you're thinking. So re-threading re is 90% of the problem. If you have any kind of bunching or nesting of threads underneath your fabrics or anything like that, just try re-threading and start all over again and you'll probably find that that makes the difference. I'm going to go off and on again just to reset it and go back to the beginning. There we go. Feed dogs are down. It's letting me know the feed dogs are down. And then we'll carry on. So it's a lot happier. And if you are doing free motion embroidery, and that could be on a quilt or if you're embroidering, monogramming or anything like that, come on out. This is where the, the speed of the machine really helps. I like to do this quite quickly. You may be wanting to go slowly. I just find that things move a lot quicker for me when I'm when I'm sewing quickly as well. So I mean, I'm scribbling away then, making a lot of nonsense really. But you just get the idea of how easy that is and how quick it is as well. And with embroidery threads, that's re uh, embroidery stitches as well, that's really important um, for me because embroidery stitches or decorative stitches tend to go sideways, up, down, backwards and forwards. And a machine can be quite slow when it's sewing them. But this machine is really very quick. So that was finishing off the job that we didn't finish last week, so I hope that's explained. You do have different embroidery feet included in here as well. And again, you can use them for monogramming, you can use them for darning. Sometimes they're called darning feet. Excuse the top of my head. And really easy to fit as well. Let's go back to the stand at foot. And have a play with some of these stitches. Oh, now I'm going to show you the, the high performance foot. 
It's got HP on it, so you know what it is. Um, Pam messaged on Facebook earlier on saying, Morning, Debbie. I've made a few handbags and tote bags, and each time my lining, when pushed inside the bag, seems too long and bulky in the bottom. I mostly do box corner bottoms. Can you tell me what mistake I'm making? And a photo of your latest make, which is lovely. You're not making a mistake. You might find it easier if you're cutting the lining to exactly the same size as the outer bag and then maybe you've got a wadding or foam or something on the inside as interfacing that's going to make the inside of your bag smaller than the outside so increase your seam allowance on the lining very slightly only by maybe an eighth of an inch or a millimeter and you'll find that the inside sits better inside so start tapering from around the top of the bag and, and just minimal amount, just taper it down very slightly. And the same when you box your corners, make that a little bit of a wider seam allowance on the outside and it'll, it'll fit nicer inside. Hope that helps. Okay, to remove the throat plate, no screwdrivers involved, there's a button at the side and you press it and the throat plate pops up. Now when I put this throat plate back in, it's got HP on it, it says on my screen, please make sure the proper foot is, is uh, connected, and it's this one. So let's pop this in here. All of this in the manual, so don't worry too much about watching me now. Like that. Now, because I've got the, um, the HP plate in there, the machine will not let me stitch anything appropriate. So if I choose, for instance, I've got my feed dogs down as well. But if I choose a decorative stitch by going into mode two, who won't let me even go into that mode? In fact, on the screen now, it's saying HP plate. And if I press it again, it'll go HP plate for goodness sake. It won't let me choose a stitch that is inappropriate. So I can't choose a decorative stitch because the, the straight stitch foot only has one gap. So if I, if I even wanted to do a zigzag stitch, it'll break the needle, and this isn't going to let me break the needle. So I've only got a, a certain amount of stitches that I can choose, and it's these in red. So I can do the straight stitch, I can do a straight stitch with a lock on the end, I can do a triple straight stitch, I can do some of the heirloom stitches, I can do decorative stitches, but only the ones that use a straight stitch. But it wasn't necessarily the stitch I wanted to show you, it was the speed that it sews at. Let me find a bigger piece of fabric. This is why I love this machine. So, are my feed dogs up or down? I can't remember. If they don't come at first time, turn the hand wheel towards you and then they'll pop up. They're still down. Now they're up. So let's put the fabric underneath and I'm going to increase the stitch length because I really want to impress you with this. Are you ready? Look at that go. Oh, I love this. It could be hemming, maybe you're making curtains. If you've got yards and yards of fabric, if you're hemming a, 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 a circular skirt, maybe. That is so quick. The speed, I mean, look at that. The speed of that machine is quicker than a lot of overlockers. It's amazing. I'm going to do a smaller piece of fabric and just show you some of the decorative stitches on here as well that you can use, just using that straight foot again. So where's my red board? Let's have a look at what number one, oh, zero, oh, oh, one, number one, number 10. Oh, I don't know. When you put your, um, your numbers in, by the way, if there's a zero in front of it, put the zero in. So don't just press number six, press 006. And then let's have a go. Now this is a stitch that if you use a clear thread in the top, is going to look like a hand stitch. I've actually got, I'm going to increase that tension a bit, see what happens. And we're going to make that stitch longer. So by increasing the tension, I'm pulling the bottom thread up. And my bottom thread is clear. Do you know, I don't like it as much. I'm going to turn it back down again. I'll show you what's happening in just a second. And this is one of the reasons why I like to play with the stitches before I commit to the fabric. That'll do. Switch you off. Curse look. That's the stitch. Then I thought, oh, tighten the tension, see what happens. Don't like that. So then I put the tension back again and I've got that. So that's a really nice decorative stitch. And when I was saying about decorative stitches with the machine going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, that's when you want a quick machine. Let's really quickly do the triple straight stitch. So you can use this for stretch fabric, which is 004. 
0.004, that's it. So again, this is slowed down a little bit because the machine's going backwards and forwards, but this makes a really lovely solid line, which is stretchy, so it's great for jersey fabrics, but it also makes a nice defining line. That could be like top stitching around the back flap in the satchel that I made in the previous hour. You could be using a golden thread and um, using this on denim to make it look like the stitches that your jeans were made in in the first place. So you get that really nice defined solid line. So those and the straight stitch are going to use with the high performance plate. But remember, that's, that's the really fast one. Right, let me just put this back on again so I don't forget. So that comes off. Easy to clean as well. You can see all the gubbins on the inside here. Press the lock button before you go delving inside anywhere though. That simply snaps back on again and then we can change the foot back to the standard foot. It does come up with an alert. It, the machine knows that the plate's been changed and it's saying to ask me to put the right foot on there, which I'm going to do right now. If you learn to sew, I know you're not gonna do this, I know, but if you learn to sew on a mechanical sewing machine or a hand crank sewing machine or an electronic sewing machine, this machine is so much easier to use. It's intuitive, it's, it knows what you're doing. It's not going to let you damage it. You can drop it. Um, but it's incredibly simple to just choose the stitches and sew with it. So, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend spending nearly 1,400 pounds if you're a beginner sewer, but a beginner sewer could certainly use this machine. So maybe you're upgrading, you, you, you're the sewer in the family, but you have somebody that wants to learn how to sew. No reason why you couldn't learn how to sew on this machine. Um, my daughter learned to sew on, on my machine. She's living with us at the moment, so her, I don't think she's going to go back to using her machine again when she goes home. <laughs> and I don't blame her. OK, um, if you've got any questions about this, we've only got five minutes left now, but do put any questions on the Facebook page, and I'm sure they'll be picked up and passed on to me at some point as well. There are more comprehensive demos on our YouTube channel, so take a look on YouTube, go to Sewing Street, click on the round Sewing Street icon, go to Videos, and then you can type in the search bar 720. And there's probably about four shows that we've done with this machine so far. Um, so I'll, over the course of those shows, I'll show you in more depth how to choose the stitches, what the stitches do, using the different feet, the over edge foot and the rolled edge foot and things like that. So take your time and make your mind up if this is going to be the machine for you. I don't think you're going to go wrong with it. It is a UK exclusive. So if you want to have a shop around and price compare, put £1,400 into the search bar, sewing machines for £1,400, and then take a look what you get and the quality that you get because I don't think you can beat it. I love this machine. Right. I think it's one of your favourites as well. It's the kind of machine that will probably be the last one that you ever buy. Till you see the upgrade. <laughs> right, let's put my gloves back in there, hadn't I? So we are coming up to the end of the live shows today. We're going to be back again tomorrow. John will be back tomorrow. Um, and he'll have his um, block of the week coming up as well. So if you've been following that, then make sure to tune in. I think it's nine o'clock he does that tomorrow morning. But I'm going to give you a recap. So I'm tidying everything where like I've finished. I'll give you a recap of our bundles. If you're bag making, oh, I love this. Really lovely quality canvas fabrics in the most amazing colours. I've, I've got all of them. I, I just, I love them. I first saw um, this neutral collection of the grey collection. I just thought, oh, that's really stylish. And I love greys and beiges together. I just think they give a, a really lovely, expensive combination, expensive looking combination of colours and quality of fabric. The first time we brought you this, it sold out. So it's a bag in stock. In total, you have two and a half metres of charcoal grey, of neutral seeded canvas, of white, of the silver grey and the black for £19.49. and pence. Each one of those is half a metre in length and 112 centimetres wide. You will love working with it and even better, you'll love what your projects look like when you've worked with it. It's amazing fabric. And in fact, let me show you the bag that I made if you weren't watching the previous show. Isn't that a lovely combination? That's only using three. So that's using the white, the dark grey and the silver grey. 
And they're all available by the half metre as well. So if you think, oh, no, I want those three, I don't want anything else, or, or I want one of those and an aubergine, then you can mix and match them together. And if you needed to order more than just half a metre, then you can do that. You can order longer lengths on the website too. So let's take a look at the pinks. So in here, I love that colour. I just, isn't that so pretty? It's like a, calling it lavender, but it's like a grey lavender, which just goes so, these three particularly. Th those, I mean, I, I was, I didn't know whether to go for these to make my bag or go for the greys. I, I love them both equally. They're gorgeous. But this bundle comes to you with a, with a pop of fuchsia and the coral as well. Mix them up in different orders and you get a different kind of look. Maybe put that in between there. Now that's a nice array of colour, isn't it? Again, there's two and a half metres in total. It's so not just for bag making, you can make a lovely lightweight summer coat out of those. They're 100% cotton, but it's of a, a, a canvas weight. So it's, it feels like linen, it's that kind of weight. Then we have the blues that remind me of the colours of the sea. So there's a teal, there's a navy, and you've got a sky blue in there as well, which I, I just need to fold properly. So those three. For your £11.49 this time, so one and a half metres there in total. Where's that from? Took that back there. But again, a really lovely combination. And there's so much here. You could easily make three bags from, um, from that combination. Then we have the nauticals. The red, the white and the blue. Very stylish, isn't it? So classic and timeless and very summery. You can make a lovely beach bag out of those. So that's £11.49. Maybe if you're doing a beach scene, you might want to add a touch of sunshine. This is the ochre, and on its own, it is available in a bundle as well, but on its own has been incredibly popular. What a lovely colour that is. No matter what you're using it with, because you... Oh, not coral. Um, it's just really stylish, and I think that with a black... Oh, that would make a nice bag, wouldn't it? Oh, that really makes it stand out. Or if you want to do something softer with the greys, it goes really well. So it's a really versatile colour. It can go with warm tones, it can go with cool tones, it can go with pale, that's nice, pale things. It would look lovely with a brown. But a really unusual colour, I think it's... It's not, it's not, well, it's more golden, isn't it? Almost like a greeny, verdigree kind of gold colour. But really lovely. I'm not surprised that's been so popular. It seems, it seems to be the colour of the moment, doesn't it, Ochre? And at £3.99 for this. Oh, actually, that's 140 centimetres wide. That's wider than I thought it was. £3.99 for that. Homewares, cushion covers, table runners, mats chair covers, is it the garden, garden furniture, cushions for the garden furniture. Your favourite bundle of the day though has been the natural. But it was first time. It's, I, I think the combination is just really classy. I think the colours are very elegant. They're very smart, they're very tasteful. And look how they go so well. I mean, you wouldn't normally put a cream colour with a white colour, but they just go. They just blend from one through to another. The black makes everything else stand out somehow. So whatever your project, I think if you're making a block dress, if you're making a coat or a jacket, if you haven't got any particular project in mind, you just love those colours, one day you're going to go to that stash and say, I'm so glad I bought those. And remember, it's a cotton canvas, so it's a heavier weight of fabric, which you'd expect to pay more than £3.99 for half a metre. That's what you pay for cotton, isn't it? And it's 140 wide. So it's wider than, um, than quilting cotton, which is generally 112 centimetres. So have a look on the website again. If you wanted to order those individually, then do feel free. Um, or if you wanted to pop my book, thank you, on your order. I've still got a few of these left as well. These are the bags that you see around me. You'll be able to make a satchel at its smallest of that size, at its largest at that size, and then lots of satchels in between as well. There are 15 designs in the book. I'm sure you're going to be able to make more when you get this home as well. 
and these are signed and the recommended retail price is £17.99. So we haven't even taken a couple of pounds off, taken five pounds off. So take advantage. <laughs> so you're saving more than your postage on this one. Um, all of the bags are made using the same plastic template. So there's no cutting out of patterns, there's no pinning of patterns. Um, the sections of the template that you're going to use are all highlighted. You simply plonk it on your fabric, draw around it, cut it out, and then have fun making them up. They're not all satchels per se, as in traditional satchels, but I just want to show the versatility of the different styles of bags that you can create. And there's lots of hints and tips as for the tools that you're going to need to use this and things like interfacing and stitches and fabrics that you can use and things like that. Lots of you sent pictures in today, so thank you so much for those. I, I love it when you send in pictures of, um, of patterns that I've designed but you've put your own twist on it. You've made it bigger, you've made it smaller, you've, you've added pockets and things like that. Um, if you wanted to sell any of the bags that you make, by the way, Oh, go ahead. You sell as many as you like. I don't mind at all. I'm not precious about the patterns. You, you make your money back. You go and make your £12.99 back and you'll make more than that with the first bag that you make, I'm sure. So if you're stuck at home at the moment, I'm going to have a competition for being labelled the bag lady, aren't I? Lots of you are going to be making bags, but maybe the intention would be to sell them when we're all back to normal again. Well, good for you. I think you're going to be able to charge a pretty price for these. I know I would do. So again, that's only £12.99. The other books are on the website as well. So there's the occasion bags, the tote bags, and the um, backpack bags as well, all using similar kind of templates. We started our show at 8 o'clock this morning with a peony panel. It is still available. We've got a few left for you. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that uplifting? Isn't it only £7.99? I'm just thinking you'd pay more for a print to hang on your wall than you would do a fabric panel like this. Um, if it were me, I would, um, I'd hand embroider. I'd add a few little clear beads just to catch the light to look like dew on the petals. I could maybe free motion embroider around it. I may quilt it. I may add sashes and, um, and borders borders, and make it really big and then put some bias binding around the edge so I've got a nice big wall hanging. Or this could be the centerpiece in a, in a quilt. That would look amazing as kind of your key block. And you've got lots of colours in there as well. It looks a little bit like watercolours, doesn't it? So pretty. But look at all the shades of the pinks and the violet hues and the, the different shades of greens. And I love the glass vase as well, which seems a bit of an odd thing to say, but it's really lifelike, isn't it? And that for £7.99. That's been really busy. I'd go for a couple of them and maybe huge cushion covers. It would look amazing. Oh, you could um, cut them out. So cut all around the edge and then use those as a pleat. You could change the colour of the background then, couldn't you? Um, and then you can position, if you go for a few, you can position them in a, in a higgledy-piggledy kind of manner. Look, that's so pretty. All printed on cotton, all printed in the UK as well. So anything you'd like to order, take a look on sewingstreet.com. You'll see everything that we've had in these three shows and everything else that we have available for you on the website as well, which is growing by the day. So it's sewingstreet.com or you can order on the phone lines, which is 0800 1144 1433. And uh, that's a UK-based helpline. If you've got any questions and queries, that's the number to call as well. But we are adding daily to the website. I think we've got 20 pages there at the moment, which isn't bad for a channel that's only been going for about six weeks. Um, so we are, we are very new, but we're very big and we're very dedicated. Um, tomorrow, John's going to be with you. And he has sewing room tools coming up at 8 o'clock in the morning. He's bringing you week two of Block of the Week at 9 o'clock. And more fabulous fabrics are coming up at 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's tomorrow. We are here seven days a week. 
um, from 8 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock in the morning live. If you've missed any of the shows, then we are on YouTube. We put all of the shows on YouTube. Hopefully, by late on this afternoon, these shows will be on YouTube as well. So if you need a recap or if you want to have, have a look at John's Block 1, which is last Friday, if you missed the live show, then you can take a look on YouTube and, uh, and have a catch up there as well. So I'm going to be back with you again on Sunday morning for a little bit of Sunday morning sewing. Can't remember what we're doing, but I'll be here on Sunday morning regardless of what we're doing, doing a bit of sewing and a little bit of chatting. Um, we're always here if you want to leave us a message. Um, Facebook's the best place to go. So if you go to the Facebook page and uh, go to visit a post, you can post there. We've had lots of messages this morning. Thank you very much. Um, and we do have a Sewing Street fans page as well, which is a group. Um, if you'd like to join them, there's uh, lots of people there that like to, it's about 20,000, that like to um, share their ideas and inspiration and ask questions on there as well. So you know that even if you're on your own at home, you're not on your own in the this sewing community there's always going to be somebody there that's um, that's going to be just the same as you like-minded people so enjoy the rest of your day today I shall see you bright and early on Sunday morning have a lovely weekend bye-bye